Do it. Do it. Come on, kill me. I'm here. Come on, do it now. Kill me. Schwartzy, the podcast. It's a Schwartzy show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Schwartzy, the podcast, the Schwartzy show. I'm your host, Milenko. And Alex. Nice to meet you. So, um, I was wondering, um, what do... Is this how you're going to talk? Hold on. Hold, I was going to ask you a question. What? Tell me. Ask me. What does uh, 80s Red Scare Communist Panic have in common with 80s era buddy cop comedies? <laughs> what? Well, do you know? It's no. This, it's what? this movie. The, the movie oh, that we're Red doing Heat. Today. Okay. Red Heat. Red okay. Heat is what that... <laughs> <My> God. <laughs> Oh my god. Is that the tagline? No, I just made that up. God, there's so much build up for do you know, a stupid do you know, joke. Do you know what the you know do you know what the, the tagline is? No, what's the tagline? What happens when you pair up Moscow's toughest detective with Chicago's craziest cop? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And um, the only thing that's worse than making them mad is making them partners. That's that's what That's the, kind of a cool one. I'm like, down with that. I'm down with that's that. That's clever. One. So the movie nobody asked for, but it was so, so uh, well received is uh, Red Heat. Um, yeah, so I think this is a good time to introduce uh, our guest that we have on today. We yeah, have a, Adam. We, hey. Hey, why, Adam. Why did you want to do this one movie? Uh, so I, I wrote this down in my notes because like, I wanted to include this. What? Sorry, I, what? I have a whole like intro for Oh Adam. my god. Adam yeah. sent me a bio to like to, Yeah, like, go. Yeah, no, like, go. specifically Fine. asked me for a bio. Go, yeah. go. No telling me none of this. I'm going to have to edit this. This is going to be so annoying oh, to edit. I'm already so annoyed. I know. This happens every single time. No, it doesn't. No, don't just be sorry. Think for one fucking second. You're like, "Oh, I'm gonna do this and it's like I, okay let's just go i can't no, but like, i want to talk about the movie well, you I have can't. no respect for like go, any just sort go of, any do sort of the form. thing oh i can't tell god. if uh this is a bit no it's no, not it's, a bit it's not oh a bit. my god really? it's not a bit this is just every episode it's this is just like the, the, this is the junk that happens every episode Me i too, uh you may have a profoundly dysfunctional relationship. And then he deletes the shit, and it's like, why? Why delete it? Why? Yeah, I gold. told you not to last time. Well, yeah, I'd listen to this. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's it's really, like, totally awkward for some people, and then some people it's not. No, uh, it's it is. He, but he you're, also you're, never believes that any of this could ever be useful to somebody out, out there. He's just yeah, like, like, oh, uh, it's boring. I like never uh, want to hear about it. And it's like, oh my god! No, just, I fine. I'll leave it. I'll probably leave it in. You don't have to leave anything you don't want to. In. Okay. I'm just saying that, like, so we have to, if we're, it, we're, we're like, can feel we like uh, I'm not getting paid enough to deal with this. <laughs> can we introduce Adam Fraser? Fraser. Yeah. Cool. I want to talk about Fraser anyway. Yeah, he does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Adam Fraser is a fourth year undergraduate psychology student at Ryerson, yeah. and he's also the director of community engagement for Canadian students for sensible drug policy, Ryerson chapter, a consulting member of the Toronto Harm Reduction Alliance and Toronto Overdose Protection Society. Adam is the creator of hashtag change my mind OPS education campaign with the Toronto Harm Reduction Alliance. This is the first time you're reading this, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's only totally <laughs> Also, something that Doug Ford is trying to fucking cancel, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. That's such a bummer, dude. Yeah, Dofo, Doug All, Ford. Also Pick any the, name you want. The change of my mind thing. Isn't that like a Crowder thing? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 it was. So we you took want, you that. You want to co-op that? We Sweet. took that. No, we took that and uh, we set up tables all around downtown at like City Hall and Dundas Square and stuff. Yeah. And had, uh, had signs on the table that said... Uh, uh, overdose prevention sites are good for the community. Changed my mind. <laughs> and we had so many people come up and talk. It was amazing. Amazing. Everything from you. like, there was one guy who, who was like, do you mind if I take your picture? Because uh, a bunch of my friends in rehab, like seeing this will make them feel like they're not alone. Fuck yeah, dude. Because like, here's the thing. This is what, what I think generally the, is, is like a, a major problem on the left. Uh, is the inability to co-op things like that because there's yeah. nothing wrong with change my mind there's nothing wrong with that yeah. uh, whereas like you know a lot of people on the left just let go of things and don't fight for them so that's an interesting way to circumvent that and just like f like fuck steven crowder that guy doesn't deserve to have that as like anything near him you know what i mean anyway well honestly i didn't know his name until people were just like 
oh, do you know this thing? Is that a Crowder thing? I was like, I, I don't know what that is. Yeah. But anyway, so there was there was that that side of it of people being like, this is amazing. But then some other people would come up. One guy came up and was like, fuck them all. Let them die. And I was like, whoa, we have got to have this conversation. And we did. The guy ended up staying and we talked for like 20 minutes, half an hour. What did he say? Right at Dundas Square. He was talking about how... Um, people's brains they they there's this natural uh urge to to survive a survival instinct and if yours isn't kicking in or you're ignoring it then you don't deserve to survive jesus yeah that's and he like, was talking about how he was like an alcoholic for years that's so uh, he struggled with with alcohol use and uh um yeah and and so we had to talk about like deregulation and how um safe supply and 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 monitoring supply that's coming in and testing it before it goes out in the community is like what the LCBO does and why that's so awesome because it keeps people like him who have uh, struggled with their alcohol consumption alive long enough to in his case decide to stop consuming you know whereas a lot of people don't have that option who who are using um, who are dependent on opioids. So he was just like, yeah, Darwinism or nothing. Fuck everybody. Yeah, but without any kind of like... Logic? Not logic, but like context. Yeah. Contextualizing his own experience with mm-hmm. with those things. And I think a lot of that just has to do with experience. Um, do you think there's an yeah. element of like somebody doubling down uh, in a way that like sort of with the mentality of if I can do it, anybody can do it? Like if I've gotten over a, a, a drug, an alcohol you know, sex, whatever. Like a sort of libertarian idea of like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah. yeah, but there is, I mean, there, there are lots of catalysts and variables and, and you could say privileges that, that a lot of people and just sometimes just like random chance that occurs that enables some people to get through a thing and others not to. So, I think if you kind of take out the idea of like, I'm super strong instead of just like, I'm just a regular person and got lucky or had like these people around to help me, you know, still and still lucky. That's like just it seems like pure happenstance, pure luck when the when it's even that, you know, yeah, in a lot of cases. Yeah. I mean, you know, I like I, I, I think about uh, opportunities for positive intervention, you know, so like a lot of people have had that experience when everything in their life has gone to shit. And, you know, a friend will say, like, here's a couch for a couple months or a parent will step in and say, you know, here's your rent for this month or here's a bunch of food, you know, that that kind of thing. Um, or, you know, a teacher or a professor to say, like, don't worry about this assignment. I'll take care of it. A parent coming in and saying, hey, I know you're really struggling with so and so. Here's rent for this month so you don't have to worry about it. Right. You know, take the time you need. That is a positive intervention. Right. Right. Um, and having that Mm -hmm. can be the difference between paying your rent that month Mm -hmm. and getting evicted and you get evicted and you you know you're living you're living in less desirable situations or on the street for a lot of people and you know having those that that intervention right there that positive interview that that bit of support Mm -hmm. is the only difference between someone who is able to get things get positive momentum going again and someone who isn't yeah. Not to oversimplify things, but like when you think about the differences between people's positions, relative positions in life, it's like socioeconomically um, as just uh, not necessarily random chance, but based on the positive or negative influences of others mm-hmm. when those those individuals were in their greatest need. Um, that it kind of levels the playing field, I guess. And it, mm. it's harder to say, you know, that, that person over there, look at that gross bum or whatever that, you know, mm-hmm. when that's just like, no, that's just someone whose parents couldn't get their shit together for them. For sure. Yeah, it's, you know? it's fascinating. Um, and that like kind of perfectly dovetails into, um, this movie and what I wanted to talk to you about in this movie. Yeah. Um, Another element, actually, before we go on of your bio that I just wanted to mention that I also think dovetails into the movie and something that we talk a lot about on Schwartzy is uh, you're the founder founder of He Talks uh, Detoxification Communication Advocacy. Um, and you talk about toxic masculinity, which 
we find is like a very uh, common occurring theme in uh, in Schwartzy movies. Yeah. Yeah. No, after that. Uh, yeah, he talks is cool. I'm really enjoying it. Um, after the um, the van attack, which was April 23rd last year. So we just passed the anniversary of that. Um, I kind of had a bit of a. A bit of a freak out as in like I, I realized that this that the dangers the the physical violence um a bit of an awakening as far as the level of escalation could you just provide us some context for what the van attack was uh yeah some some idiot who didn't feel like they fit in with the world decided that uh he was going to target uh rent a van and drive it down young street and target a bunch of women and so he just drove down the sidewalk, swerving to hit a bunch of women. And uh, yeah, that's, you know, like that's the sort of thing you figure is going to happen in the States because they're nuts. But to have it happen here, you know, it's. And I get the problematic aspects of even what I'm saying right now. There's so much going on as far as toxic masculinity and domestic violence and abuse and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But to see it manifest in a terrorist attack was uh i think it was impossible to ignore yeah for sure and and you know what like i mean as problematic as something as that can be the uh, something has to be the catalyst for it and and uh, you know uh, to move forward in a more positive way is always better than uh, to use that uh, tragic situation to move forward in a positive way is better than, uh, you know, just sitting there and being like, well, that sucks that that happened. I'm going to move on with my day. You're actually going out and doing something uh, about it. So. Well, you know, I mean, there's a lot of men, I think, who are kind of on the fringes of, you know, like you can be hanging out at a bar with a bunch of guys and one guy says like, oh, you know, blah, 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 something that, you know, would might make some of the other men feel a little uncomfortable to hear it but aren't going to say anything because that's the dynamic of that group of friends or, you know, the challenging another man's masculinity, I guess, or their, you know, whatever it is that they're saying, um, isn't necessarily the sort of thing that we do as men. I mean, there's like posturing and stuff when you're like bumping chests and you know, that, that kind of stuff. But, uh, I don't, I haven't experienced a lot of conversations of men, you know, at bars or whatever, being out, being like, hey, man, it's not cool to say that thing. Let's talk about that. This is, I, I think that's not cool and this is why. Yeah. And yeah, I don't think those conversations happen. But the movie that we're talking about today is Red Heat. Yeah. Adam, tell me why, why you picked this movie. Okay, so when I was, uh, I was eight or nine years old and uh, I was staying home from school because I was sick and I was watching this movie from bed and uh my dad came in and he got i remember i distinctly remember him getting really really mad at me for watching it uh not because of the content of the movie or anything uh but because i was like sick and supposed to be resting <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's a hilarious story that's why this is your favorite schwartzy movie uh yeah one of them that's the amazing. other one was the uh is the weight lifting room scene Steam room oh, at the start. At the beginning of the oh, movie. I love the weightlifting Perfect. room. Could could I just point out two things before sure. we get into true, true movie? Yeah, yeah. Uh, TriStar Pictures. Yeah, oh, I wanted to talk to you about TriStar Pictures. <laughs> and and uh, uh, Carl, Calico. Calico. Uh, Carl, or Co Car Carlico. Carlico. Where it uh, like outlines the sea with the Terminator uh, lightning. So fucking awesome. Oh, it's okay, so, good. so so first of all, why does why does TriStar have a horse, a flying horse? Oh, Makes that no has sense. rotoscoped wings. Amazing. Anyway. We get into the movie. All the credits have uh, backwards, backwards R's. R's which yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Whoa. In this shit is Russian. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, the backwards R is pronounced ya, and the backwards N is pronounced E. e. No way. Yeah, yeah, isn't that interesting? Cyrillic. We know Cyrillic. Huh. Uh, the movie's directed by Walter Hill. Yes. Uh, in which, uh, I mean, he, writer of fucking Aliens. Dude, um, Walter Hill 
Amazing. This, yeah. this is, okay, I'm just gonna come out right and say it. This was a great movie. I, and I love like, this movie. Totally yeah. forgot, and don't even think I would have appreciated it. Like even like two years ago, this movie's amazing. This movie is what I wanted raw deal to be oh yes like me where it's too. like somebody who's schwartzy that's not really schwartzy yes but he's playing a character and it like the mo- fucking movie moves it's got <laughs> great characters fucking super amazing uh character actors which we'll get to guys uh, can I, uh, how did you guess how did you guess so they uh, the people that made this movie mm-hmm. were denied permits to film in the red square so they like did gorilla gorilla shots. filming yeah, they, they did like gorilla oh shooting shots. That's amazing. At least, isn't that That's amazing? That's so awesome. Yeah. Wow. That's so awesome. In, and okay, can I just say that the shots they get of the USSR at that time are unbelievable. They're like historical documents. Yeah, because this movie was 88, right? Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. before the Berlin Wall fell. Yeah. That's That's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. So we get into the movie. Um, we see parts of outside Russia. Uh, and then we cut into the first scene into a steam room. Oh, it's it looks a, like such a bathhouse. It's and, totally, it totally looks seems amazing. like a bathhouse. There's sweaty dudes just, it, there's sweaty dudes just like fucking, Lifting like weights. basically jacking it. Yeah. And like naked women yeah, in, the, a in that fountain. I'm watching this as like an eight year old being like that right there. <laughs> that is what I want. Yeah. I want a bunch of ripped dudes and naked women, <laughs> everybody hanging out in a little pool together. That is my happy place. I'm so glad I did that. I've been able to do that as an adult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oasis Aqua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout, shout out, out to the sex Shout out to, shout to, out to, to, to Oasis the sex club in Toronto. <laughs> We're wearing like loincloths. Oh. Where it was like clearly they wa- they wanted to be naked. In oh, the, the loincloth movie. with just the little like the little strings. string in the back. <laughs> But that was the thing, like when they're when they're when they're all like when things go nuts and they all start like punching and kicking and flipping over each other. How 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 is there not a single dong? Yeah. Oh. Like how are these things weighted? How how does this work? <laughs> also, how long Arnie's is versus everyone else's? Ooh, it's a long class. Nice, nice uh, observation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just say I wore out the tape on that. <laughs> so we get Schwartzy at, at three or two minutes and thirty five seconds in. <laughs> And the first thing we see is Schwartzy ass uh, looking very thin. Schwartzy Guza, so slender. Very ripped, very super, looking super good in this movie. And the pointy hair. It sounds like you really have have, uh, a little uh, crush on Arnold Schwarzenegger. The like classic pointy up hair. I love the like Johnny Bravo cut. (laughs) Totally, totally. And then we get to Sven Ole Thorsen, dude. Oh Oh. my God. I got to score some steroids. Okay, so we have this segment called Spot the Sven. And like we basically, Alex and I love this actor. He's this Danish bodybuilder. Who, oh, he's the one with like the dark beard that yes. was like cut really hard. Yeah. I was watching that. I was like, oh my God, that guy's glasses are not fogging up for some reason. <laughs> oh no, that's, no, one, that's the other guy. I don't know a, who you exactly who the you're daddy talking type. To. Yeah, there's totally, so many daddies totally. in this oh, scene. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. it was amazing. Uh, no, yeah. Sven is, is, uh, he's got more of like a like salt and pepper, salt and pepper yeah. look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's a very, <laughs> oh, you got to call some steroids. I got to call some steroids. Basically, Schwartzy goes up to like an Asian uh, Russian. Yeah, guy. it was an Asian Russian guy, which uh, was really cool. Which it, was he really was cool. he was cool. Like he was so like uh, he had such a like big round face with long epic like yeah. four hair. Yeah, totally. And he ha- he says something to Schwartzy about like these are not the hands of a foundry worker. Worker. He's kind of like challenging his like masculinity in this scene. So he's like, let's see how long you can hold this rock for. And then Schwartzy he holds this boiling hand. rock and then punches him with the rock. He falls. Falls out of the window at like two stories into snow. Schwartzy jumps out, beats the shit out of him with another guy. With yeah. Sven. Sven and is the still guy. no loincloth no. drooping. Oh. No, no. Also, we we reveal that Arnold has a terrible Russian accent. Oh, it's so terrible. terrible. It's so bad. But it's great. I love it. I think it's awesome. So how did you guess? How did you guess? About the Russian accents in this movie. There's only two people who had a legitimate Russian accent in this movie. Everyone else was like from a different place. I have actually a how did you guess? How did you guess? For this as well. Um, uh, apparently, there's a deleted scene in this movie that explains that Danko was raised in East Germany. Ex- an explanation, an in universe explanation for his terrible accent. So I'm totally okay with it. 
That's pretty cool. Um, that is yeah. pretty cool. I mean, they, they, but like what I noticed in this first initial uh, scene, close-ups of Lennon, close-ups of, <sighs> of uh, Marx. That At was one amazing. Point, there was close-up. Uh, there was like a wide where a prominent no-leg, one-legged man was like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just like, hobbling along with by. his comrades. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what's it called? And, and then military, like perfect unison military. It was great. Victor Rasta is a drug dealer that Schwartz has been chasing for I guess like a while. He's a yeah. detective and he meets with his um he meets with his partner, this blonde partner that was in the steam room with him, kind of scoping out this situation. Mm -hmm. And when they meet, he talks about how like after the the snow fighting incident, he cracks a weird joke to Schwartz because he's like the fellows at the station used to call you iron jawed, but after the snow fight, they call you round headed. Ha <laughs> I'm circumcised myself. Such a weird Whoa. scene. Like, oh yeah. So this is the other thing. About their dicks. When <laughs> I was watching this, I didn't have uh, subtitles. Oh, you, you so probably missed, downloaded the same one I did. Yeah, I yeah, did, yeah. Like, so I'm watching this. this, being like, nice. I, <laughs> I downloaded yeah. the subtitles. Yeah, yeah. I bet they're talking about Tolstoy. <laughs> <laughs> they were talking about their dongs. That that makes sense. I love that so much. Well, when he when he gets to the the bar to interact with Victor to Victor, where the guys like playing Tom Waits covers in Russian. Yeah, for yeah, sure. But like, it's interesting. Uh, this movie has like a lot of interesting parts to it in terms of like representing Russians in like kind of an amazing way, yes, but also totally. kind of like a horrendously oppressive way. Yes. So like com simultaneously commenting on how like shitty they've been to Georgians and how they hate them and repress totally. them. Totally. And then I all love of a that. sudden- There's like inter, this movie's very like, um, nuanced, yeah. like weirdly nuanced. Yeah, I it, noticed that too, where it's just like, you know, talking about like to, to Victor about how like, oh yeah, like you treat us like crap, like get out of here. What are you doing? What are you, like, this isn't the old days anymore, you know, stuff like that. Exactly. Like, obviously so these cool. people are drug yeah. dealers because of this. Yeah, you know? because of like this like horrible oppression. And then, okay, this amazing scene where Schwartzy is confronting Victor and his brother and another gangster and the other gangster is like, don't leave us alone. Why are you bothering us? We haven't done anything wrong. Where's your proof? And then Schwartzy flips him over. And in a scene that's just as iconic as the snow fight and the rock holding, he fucking rips his leg off and it's wooden leg that has a, like a, like a, a cork in it. Cork in it that yeah, he pulls yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That pop noise. Oh, oh so perfect. brutal. So and brutal. Then just cocaino. Like, cocaino. <laughs> That's it. And then just loose cocaine comes out of the, the, the like wooden leg, which is amazing. And then everyone starts shooting and they run out and they separate. And Schwartzy's partner goes after Victor and Schwartzy goes after the brother and they shoot the brother and kill him. Yep. And Victor shoots the partner and kills him. At the same him. time, with his sleeve gun, oh, too. The which sleeve is gun was amazing. I love the, like, the flippy, like, it was the, are you talking to me gun? The, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. taxi driver gun? Totally, totally. I love the mechanism. It was so cool. It was so yeah. cool. It was like a Derringer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, I, and, but I love how it was, like, setting up that classic American cop Totally. Like buddy cop thing where it's like, you know, the bad guy kills my partner, so I'm out for revenge. Yeah, kind of thing. Totally, totally. It was just like it was so much like the opening was just like, look at Russians. They're a lot like us now that the Cold War's kind of over, but they're still different. That's exactly what it is. That's exact well, it was funny because like we have an uncle in in Serbia that yeah, was yeah. telling me about uh like what it was like being a cop in like former Yugoslavia, and he was like like a he was like, Is was it he a like cop? What? Was he a cop? Jolly, right? No, he was secret police. Oh, he was, yeah, uh, yeah secret uh, police. He was like KGB, uh, the KGB of Serbia, <laughs> of, Serbia of Yugoslavia. Yeah. But he, it was just like, cops aren't like that. He is like, cops aren't like that in Serbia. I was trying to get him, like, ask him questions. He was like, no, it's it's not the same. It doesn't it, function the same way. You guys give up? Oh, yeah, thirsty for more. Cops in Serbia are so easygoing. Yeah. Uh, one time I, w like, I went through a red light and I fully, like, went through a red light because it yeah, was just yeah. like, it was trying to make the turn. Yeah. And he stopped me and he, like, vi he was like, dude, I have you on videotape. Like I saw you, like I'm going to give you a ticket right now and it's going to be for like 400 euros. And I was like, listen, can you just not give me that ticket? <laughs> and, and he was like, you want me to not give you the ticket? And I was like, yeah, just, 
don't give it to me. And he was like, all right. And he handed me back my license <laughs> and I drove away. Like it was literally that easy. I love that. I, it That's was awesome. like an amazing story. I, I, yeah. I was totally in the wrong and I deserved that ticket. Yeah. And he was like, okay, I'll just let you go. Wow. Ballsy. Yeah. Yeah, um, are we going to take a break to uh, recognize our sponsor, White Privilege? <laughs> <laughs> well, in Serbia, it's like just like everyone yeah, privilege. It, it's not the same sort of... Uh, it's pretty homogenized there. It's but, not like po- that same power dynamic. I guess it would be with like Roma people because they mu- probably wouldn't do that with a Roma person. But yeah, they yeah, also yeah. probably wouldn't have a car even. Yeah, that's, like, that's true. The, like, that's probably that's the, just the reality it of it. For, for Roma people. But people who are like like in a different socioeconomic position that are Roma in Serbia face that kind of racism nonstop. Wait, that aren't Roma people? No, that are Roma people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Roma yeah, people that sure. transcend classes. My my okay. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah, our yeah, grandfather yeah. adopted a Roma a Roma girl. Hmm. Um and she's she's our aunt. Mm-hmm. Uh, or she was, she passed away. Mm-hmm. But um she like put her through school, she was a nurse, she yeah, had her own and she place. had like she she lived like a life in Serbia that Roma people don't live. Yeah. Um and but she still faced so much racism and she had so much internalized racism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because she like me. transcended yeah. classes yeah, and sure. yeah. So I got a new joke. What's the I joke? I got a new joke. <laughs> um a uh, a misogynist, a racist, and a Christian walk into a bar. And the bartender says, what'll it be, officer? <laughs> uh, that's, that was, I really like that. Did you come yeah. up with that? Well, I amended it. I don't remember where I heard the bulk of it. but What was the other joke you used to say? Uh, uh, there was the one you told so many times, but it was funny every <laughs> single time. Oh Oh my God! You said, "Oh yeah, well, how does a mansplainer?" Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. me the mansplainer yeah. joke. Where where does a mansplainer go to get his water? Where? A uh, well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's wow, kind of like a bad joke, but it's really good. good. Yeah, that's it's really good. good. I love it. Yeah, Are you yeah. comfortable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm great. All right. Knock knock. Who's there? To. To who? To whom? <laughs> no! Get out. All right, I'm done. <laughs> you guys give up? Oh, yeah, thirsty for more. Can I just say, a, how did you guess about the music? How did you guess? How did you guess about the music? Uh, the way Walter Hill scored this was he told the the composer to make music that sounded like somebody had won an Olympic gold medal. That's Isn't so that weird amazing? That's outrageous. That's awesome. I, Victor uh, escapes running past the sickle and hammer, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then yeah. Uh, we hear 80s jazzy music. And yes. uh, we we cut to the United States. Oh, my God. I yeah, love it. Yeah. And the first thing that they cut to is an advertisement for yeah, Levi's yeah, yeah. jeans. Totally. Which is just like, here's jazz and capitalism, the two most American things ever. Totally. Love, love, love that. And then, yes, uh, one of the, what turns out to be the leader of the clean head gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I love. Oh. I love that that name, the clean head gang. I love so that the outrageous. clean heads were kind of like, a, like it's an invented gang, right? I think but so. But they kind yeah. of are like, are loosely based on like the Muslim Brotherhood and like. I don't know. No? I have no idea. Didn't you kind of get that I sort of vibe? I thought that immediately where it was just like, I'm assuming these are like black Muslim Because the way he, the way he was talking the on the phone, he had like this sort of vernacular where he yeah, was yeah. like, where I was like, so he talks to Abdullah Victor. Elijah. <laughs> he talks to no Abdullah Elijah is, is the, the guy, guy in prison. prison. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Go, go, go. The leader of the clean heads is on the phone talking to Victor in the other, like in the phone stall next to him. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that torn hundred dollar bill. I yeah. love that. That was like the key to identifying. It. That's so awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah. 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 Totally. Uh, yeah. He tears a hundred dollar bill to give to as as a signal. Or a code to, to the to drug Victor, dealer to Victor or to the drug dealer in order to later on meet up and yeah, attach to like the two hundred. Yeah, sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is yeah, also yeah. it was perfect. such a great setup for such a like you didn't know what the torn hundred dollar bill was for the whole movie, and then totally. at the end you get that amazing payoff. Yeah, and and the interesting thing is to use that specific uh, uh, like a piece of capitalism, yeah, like to show that like this is how America works. Uh, it works purely based on money. By the way, that guy's performance in the phone booth, fucking outrageous, 
fucking incredible. I loved it because it seemed totally natural, but also yeah, amazingly okay, outrageous. So I wanted to talk about that because I thought it was amazing too. He he has this thing where he's like on the phone and he's speaking in this vernacular where it's like a code so that if someone's listening in, it can't be deciphered. But it's also simple enough that like a person who doesn't know English might be able to understand. Totally, totally. So I think that this was like so perfectly executed because Victor being a person who speaks English as a second language is like okay i got what he said totally and he drives totally. off with his like partner whose name was Josip something and i was just like this was totally like a, a tito <laughs> shout out marshall tito from yugoslavia the like leader slash like dictator or i guess or ish dictator ish of former dictator. yugoslavia um he he was like i think they named one of the characters after him nice. <laughs> i wanted to just like shout that out nice, as a nice. thirsty for more thirsty for more and then uh, we get our fucking cool and stylish looking Lawrence Fishburne. Oh, you mean Larry Fishburne? Larry Fishburne. Machine! This is yeah. sti- was this still in the decade of, of Larry Fishburne? Like yeah, the, the end credits featured Larry Fishburne. Perfect. And I freaked I wish, out about that. I, wanna, I want that to come back. I love, hold on, before he comes in, uh, we meet, um, we meet James Belushi, right? Like he's in the car. Oh, right. right. Or is oh it my Jim God. Belushi? Yeah, Jim yeah. Belushi. So, okay. The the lesser of the two Belushis. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Art Ridzik. Art Ridzik. Detective yeah. or Detective Art Ridzik. Oh my God. He, like in Twins, this is what I think they wanted Danny DeVito to be. Because, okay, totally. so we, we did Twins out of order. Let's just admit that to the audience at home. Uh, we, we did Twins out of order to accommodate our guests, our How Did You Guests. Yeah. And um, because Catherine is going to be on the yeah, uh, yeah, Twins yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it or, doesn't, it, I'm explaining too much. I'm mansplaining our podcast. <laughs> Belushi delivers such a like, he's a piece of shit and he's a very particular kind of piece of shit but I couldn't help but love him. Yeah, he's very captivating in the role. And people are doing the opposite of what uh, they're doing in Twins, which was in Twins, uh, whenever somebody would catcall a woman, like they seemed to be super into it, whereas everybody was oh, so they, not into yeah, Jim Belushi. Yeah, yeah. So in this world, all. in this world, he's yeah. very obviously a piece of shit. Yeah, like, like it's everybody like, doesn't like. No one likes him. <laughs> no one likes him. No yeah, one yeah. likes him at all. And he immediately starts by being like, "Hey, those jugs. You think those jugs are real? No, no. Uh, hey, fun bag patrol. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, and people in the car, like." Lawrence Fishburne in the car is like, oh, that's so yeah. unprofessional. Just, dude, what? <laughs> yeah. Stop and it. Then, and then Gallagher, <laughs> Detective Gallagher, his partner is like, come on, man, we're on the job. He's like, you can tell he really likes him, but he's like, he's like that friend. Yeah. You're just like, oh, I've known you for so long. And <laughs> I, he is the Ron McLean <laughs> oh, to dude. Don Cherry's Jim Belushi. He's the Alex to the like. <laughs> just like, oh. <laughs> Oh, Come on, amazing. dude! I've known you for so long. Oh my um, god, that's amazing! And uh, yeah, so uh, Larry Fishburne scoffs, gets out of the car, and um, Gallagher joins Larry with fucking Art, and they all go inside this building, and it's clearly like a kind of, I guess, I would call it a building in an impoverished area because it's really run down and. And they're like walking up the stairs. And as they're walking up the stairs, they're like, so I got this hot tip from my guy Streak who said that, you know, the clean heads would be here. And this is a really good tip. You know, I trust, I trust this guy. In the middle of this planned ambush, Jim Belushi throws a tantrum about the clean heads. And Larry turns around and he's like, you were this close to losing your job. <laughs> and, yeah, Ga- yeah, yeah. and Gallagher's like, come on, man. Like, yeah. he's like, please just calm down like you you can't be acting like this that guy was great i love that acting. yeah, yeah he yeah. was, so, he was good. so good the like gallagher yeah. i love gallagher well, the way he played it was just like whoa this guy's just a really nice guy they fucking smashed the door down guns a blazing yeah. the way everything was done in the 80s and inside we see a cachet now sachet away of guns and illicit drugs and i mean my god like 
the fucking guy who hides with the shotgun. With the shotgun. How did that guy not hit anybody? I know. It was, but it was amazing when you see the two dudes like run, and then you just see the door blow out, and it's yeah. just like, holy fuck, this is amazing. And yeah, two yeah. of the clean heads get handcuffed to the old pipes. Yeah, and they just leave them there. They leave them there. <laughs> all, awesome. all three of them leave to go chase yeah, yeah, this yeah. one dude. Yeah, it's amazing. And then we get a like a big eighties freeze, motherfucker. Totally. <laughs> oh my god. And like fucking. Jim Belushi intercepts him and arrests him. Oh my god! He, saying, points, he points the gun and he says, "You look like Marvin Hagler. I lost money on Hagler." I was like, "Whoa, dude!" Like, so this is the first whoa. scene. This is the first scene of like overt racism. Yeah, I yeah, think. for sure. Like, for sure. He's like oh, an overt racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was like, "Whoa, that's yeah, a yeah. bold choice." Because he's like really, I don't know. And somehow he was weirdly likable to me. I was like, still like. Kind of like, oh, yeah. But I guess the, it now is the you that, know. Yeah, you're right. How Trump supporters feel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is racist, I guess. Well, the thing, the, the interesting thing is like, yeah, it, it, that's a yeah, good point. That's, mm-hmm. that's, it's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, like the, this was like, holy fuck. Dude. When I, when I commented earlier, like, I mean, I guess like this is the disconnect that like white liberals generally make, which is like. Well, if it's not the N word, then it's not racist. Even though I wrote down that it was racist, then there's that other scene. I, I know which other scene. Oh, I got so two other scenes. Two other scenes. I don't there's remember. There's two other. But but uh, but like it, it is it is sort of weirdly like there's like a cognitive dissonance where it's like, huh, what was racist in that movie? Until I'm reading my actual notes. <laughs> the KGB is getting an official report, and there's a hilarious scene where there's like propaganda posters and like a glorious bust of Stalin in this like police police station. station. It's amazing. I loved it so much. And that captain who seemed Serbian. He seemed like a Serbian dude. Oh, he seemed so much like a Serbian dude. (laughs) Okay, I gotta say this is the first time we get the name Ivan Danko and I want to talk about Ivan Danko because Ivan Danko is such a good name that I don't even want to call him Schwartzy in this. Like, usually I call Schwartzy Schwartzy. Schwartzy through everything but Danko. Danko is so so good and honestly if we have listeners by the time this episode comes out danko memes i really want people to make some danko memes <laughs> oh my god yes danko memes oh wouldn't that be amazing that i you gotta get some of those ivan danko memes yeah, yeah. totally mm, yeah. totally my favorite lines uh delivered by the the police chief telling um ivan danko uh about america is like uh, America, gangsters, Chicago, uh, and he doesn't oh, yeah, even yeah, know yeah, it. Yeah, I yeah. love that so <laughs> much. It's just hilarious because it's fully what a person would do. It, totally, like, yeah. He also says uh, we have to protect ourselves from the poisons of the West, which is so good. So he good. Tell, so this guy's debriefing Schwartzy mm-hmm. to tell him that like you got to go to America, you got to get Victor, but don't tell the Americans anything. Yeah, and keep all our Russian secrets and bring Victor home. That is your job. And he like takes this, this like really seriously. Like he takes his job super seriously. He's super collectivist. He's like very loyal to his ideology in this movie. It was amazing. Yeah. 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 It's also really fascinating um, to think about the pettiness of going through all of that and being like, we just want to hide this this criminal. We don't want our country to look bad. When it's like, no American would would care, but they care. Yeah. It's just like the the like weird Olympics shit that they pulled, where it's mm-hmm. like they no like everyone would, was juicing. No one would care, but at the same yeah. time, they care. And yeah, it's yeah. Like, you know, I'm really looking forward to the Olympics. That it's like mandatory juicing. Yeah, Ooh, totally. That's That'd gonna be, be good. I don't mind separate Olympics. Shit. Like we could do those every other year. So we have like an Olympics every single year. It would be like the summer Olympics, <laughs> winter Olympics, the, juice the Olympics, summer juice Olympics, the Olympics, the winter juice Olympics. <laughs> the and then like, Olympics, yeah. <laughs> Eventually yeah, yeah, we're yeah. just watching robots do the things. <laughs> so. No, there's a, there's a, there's a comic. Uh, his name is Rob Pugh. You should check him out. He's absolutely hilarious. Um, but yeah, he does a, a bit where he talks about that and he's like, I just want to see some like, you know, super ripped, juiced up dude in a, in like the hundred meter dash, like just drop down on all fours and just like push. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so yeah. Art is waiting at O'Hare airport in yeah. Chicago and he's waiting for Schwartzy to land. And then 
he cat calls a woman who tells her to blow who tells him to blow himself mm-hmm. and he says thank you thank you for that suggestion and he's <laughs> eating chips and gallagher joins him and he's talking about the clean heads police report and art is mad that larry said his performance was just adequate adequate yeah because yeah, yeah. they clearly have some kind of history where art is a loose cannon and he's such a troublemaker yeah oh i love that so much and even when his partner gallagher like comes up to be nice to ivan he's like how was your flight uh, or he's like, first time in Chicago? Yes. Have a nice flight? Yes. Fine. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like so like pragmatic. I love it so much. I love it's, it. I love the introduction of Danko because Schwartzy plays such an amazing straight man. So how did you guess about Walter Hill? How did you guess? Walter Hill said that he wanted to cast Schwartzy in this movie because he knew that Schwartzy could act. And he wanted <sighs> Schwartzy to act not like with punchlines, not with like clever shit, just with Schwartzy eyes, dude. Schwartzy eyes. He wanted him to have Schwartzy eyes. Amazing. Schwartzy eyes. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. And he wanted Schwartzy to have Schwartzy eyes and he wanted Schwartzy to be just like a total straight man for um, Jim, Belushi. Jim Belushi's kind of like a goofy off the wall character. But he's not. The weird thing is, I remember this movie being way goofier and it's so like it's play, pretty. It's, it's, it's funny. It's not even a buddy comedy, I would say. No, it's more just like a drama with comedic elements. Yeah, totally. Yeah. A dramedy. Yeah, it was a dramedy. Cop dramedy. <laughs> um, and then the line, um, you know, Chicago's hot. Like it's it's because of the humidity, oh. the moisture in the oh, air. Yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. like, how's it in Moscow? Hot, no moisture. <laughs> <laughs> I love the hot, no I moisture. But yeah, and then and then when Jim Belushi's like, oh, we got to go. I'm parked in a red zone. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I that's love amazing. That. I yeah. love that. Um, he, he's Schwar- so great. They're both Schwar- so great. Schwartzy tells Schwartzy tells Art that English classes were compulsory in Kiev, where he went to the army. That oh yeah, like really- the chicken. Yeah, yeah. And it was like chicken <laughs> Kiev. Oh my god. Did he make that joke, or was that a different movie? I was he watching. Made that he joke. Made that okay, joke. okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, good. yeah for sure. And then Schw- <laughs> Schwartzy basically uh, gets them to drop him off at the same motel. Yeah, and that- they're like, "Are you yeah, sure yeah, you want to yeah. stay here? It's a dump." And yeah. he's like. <laughs> I yeah, stay here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hold on. Hold on. The same hotel that, that Victor was in. Just to yeah, for the yes. audience. Sorry. Um, and we get fucking. And stay in the same room. And stay in the same room. Yeah. Because he knows. It, look, clearly he knows something that, that everybody else does. But we get Pruitt Taylor Vince. Who's a, a like a character actor from like a bunch of movies? He's a classic yeah, yeah. that guy, I love and that the, guy. his characteristic that's like really noticeable is that he doesn't he has a problem with the motor functions in his eyes, mm-hmm. so they just go from side to side, and like it was so much less in this movie that I was like I didn't recognize him right away, and I was like whoa he's not bald, and he's like he's like a handsome dude he was a hand- uh, and Schwartz he goes up to the same uh, hotel room uh, that he was in pops in a quarter into the TV and there's a porno yeah, and, and he porn. goes capitalism which I was love great the love that was it. so capitalism. good and then the next scene we're fucking introduced to fucking Peter Boyle who is amazing as a police chief oh, pol- and he's so ridiculously nice so everybody is actually <laughs> so ridiculously nice yeah in this movie. everybody like all of the cops all the America cops they're like decently good progressive dudes yeah. <laughs> it's so weird they're always like be respectful to our guest and Jim yeah. Belushi is the only one who's yeah. a complete American dick yeah 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 in total contrast it's to so anyone. true it's so and true it's like I, I wrote down. Everyone else was so reasonable They're and so nice. polite and accommodating. <laughs> yeah, I, I wrote down. It's weird how so much of Peter Boyle, like whatever Peter Boyle says in this movie is like really reflexive on American culture. Yeah, yeah. You know what? They did an interesting thing where they were outwardly really accommodating to Schwartzy, but then sometimes to each other, they'd be like, I don't know, these fucking Russians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, which that is exactly hilarious. what would happen in real life. Totally, right? yeah. totally. And then, and then like basically Schwartzy comes in to like get a, debriefing of what he's supposed to do and Boyle has this amazing these amazing lines where he's like stress management you watch the fish you water the plants monitor your blood pressure listen to the pleasant sounds 
I think it's a crock of shit. But when you're facing a bypass, you stop asking questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like amazing. Like it's just such a weird breakdown of like what American culture is sort of like now even. To what Schwartzy responds. Yeah, yeah. How what, do you- what do you do to, to de-stress in Russia? Vodka. Vodka. <laughs> so good. And I was so just watching good. that being like, that dude must be shit faced all the time. Twenty four seven. I know. I yeah. know. So the plan is to get Victor, sign extradition papers, and take him to the airport and go home. Because Victor's been arrested for like some minor charges, like he didn't have a license and he went through a red light. Yeah, yeah. And so basically it's supposed to be a cut and dry thing. They want to get rid of these Russians as fast as possible because they just don't want the problem on Chicago's hands, yeah. right? Which, which is also awesome because like it, it just in a in a tangential way in movies to like capture the main villain right away to have him escape is such mm-hmm. a great little plot device. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. so awesome because it gives him a chance to be like, no, Victor has to prove himself to find this guy. Right. Next scene, Schwarzy's walking through the jail and the cop lets him into the cell with Victor. He handcuffs Victor to himself. And then as he's handcuffing him. Victor tells him to eat shit and he pins him to the jail bars. Oh, fuck. I love this scene so much. And Art is making wisecracks in the meantime, being like, oh, they're old friends. You can tell from their body language. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And then at one point he tells uh, Jim Belushi to kiss his mother's ass and he freaks out. And he yeah, says, he t- yeah. What am I supposed to do? Just let that slide? I know. I know. And, then he, and he says, um, I'm fine. I'm fine. Every day somebody tells me to fuck my mother. Yeah. Yes. Have you like, seen my mother's ass? Whoa, that's so intense. It was so yeah, weird. No, he's uh, he's nuts. Yeah, and he's an awful bastard. He's such a terrible person. Can we also just note that Schwartzy notices that Victor has a key, and he asks him what the key is for, and the reason that. Victor tells Art to go fuck his mother's ass is because, like, <laughs> is because he, like, asks him about this key. I honestly never understood people freaking out so much about having their mothers insulted. Like, that was always such a weird thing to me. Because usually people insulting your mother don't know your mother. And I'm like, how much weight can this really carry? Yeah, like, that's true. Is it just like, <laughs> like you yeah. know, you thought about this. But when they say what they do about yours, you're like, did you know that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, yeah, my mother is a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the deal with that? Gallagher is calming art down trying to tell him that like victor just isn't their problem anymore and as they're walking through the halls the clean heads walk in oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. security guards security yeah yeah, yeah. and they're joined the clean heads are joined with one of victor's yeah one of victor's henchmen and then there's a shootout where basically the henchman dies or sorry the henchman gets shot and um gallagher gets shot yeah and schwartz gets beaten up Yeah, he gets hit in the head with a fucking baton. Yeah. And you know what I loved about this scene is that in the next scene right after, like he fully has a concussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's actual weight and consequences to getting hit in the head in this movie. Yes. Because we talk a lot about how in 80s movies, people got hit in the head and there was no like head trauma. They just like pass out. Yeah. No, I love that. Also, I noticed throughout the movie that uh, the bruise that he has on his mouth it's from where there. he got hit it's there but it gets like a little bit <laughs> less and less all the time it's so good so, so by the time so they're good. at like the motel shootout it's like barely there but yeah, you can but still it's see still it there. Ugh, so, so good such attention to detail you know it's one of the best movies ever made <laughs> it's well, a really good movie it's, it's also what i like about it in, ter- in the canon of schwarzy too yeah, is yeah, that yeah. the implication is that yes he's a really strong dude yeah but it's more because he's a russian that he's a superhuman <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know what That's i mean so true. like he's like really really strong but that strength exists in real life as opposed to like him carrying a steel beam or him carrying a giant log it's like oh no he can just punch really hard yeah no that reminds me what if so okay if you had a superpower, any superpower, what would it be? I know yours. It's probably flying, right? I think so. I'd probably go with invisibility because yeah. I can steal shit. You know yeah. what mine is? What? Soviet Russia. 
<laughs> oh man! Oh man! That's really good. That's really. Uh, good. That's the superpower I want. Oh uh, yeah, no. We're so like basic, bitch. Alex was like, "Well, maybe flying, like invisibility." <laughs> I take that question seriously. I don't know. You're yeah, doing yeah, yeah. a dad joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the clean heads and Victor escape into a station wagon that the other accomplice is driving, and they drive off. Um, fucking Art is Art is so upset that his partner's dead. Schwartz's concussed, but he grabbed the key. Before, yeah, yeah, he got the key before Victor could get it and pocketed it. And Victor needs that fucking key. Yeah, so bad he does. This was amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Great. I love the key subplot because it's so like iconic and it like ties an object to an idea yeah. of like I need this, so I need to get you. And it like adds so much stakes yeah, to the they, story. They, they all individually have uh, motives for being around each other, for being John uh, Jim Belushi to be with uh, Ivan Danko, Victor to be with Ivan Danko. He has a personal relationship with his partner. He has a personal relationship with his brother. Uh, Belushi has a personal relationship with his partner. It's like amazing. It's and so Belushi well has like this weird side relationship with his brother-in-law. Yo, which is yeah. Amazing. I love that at the end. <laughs> <Total> okay, <laughs> yeah, we'll okay get let's that. get to that. Just we a all rich, wrote that down. Just a rich universe. You know what? The key... The key is the one ring. Yeah, totally. And this totally. is just as in depth as Middle Earth. <laughs> um, essentially, what happens next is uh, two Russian go- uh, like diplomats are interrogating Schwartzy. Uh, uh, yeah, Schwartzy, uh, yeah, yeah. saying that they let they embarrass he embarrassed the country. He let Victor escape. Um, and that it's going to be the b- embarrassment around the world. And it's like just bizarre that they, it's like. The doctor really doesn't want Larry to see Schwartzy, but Larry's like, come on, these other guys saw him. And she was like, well, they're the closest thing he has to family here because they're Russians. The, yeah, totally. <laughs> that was such a random touch. Uh, and they did interrogate him. She was like, they weren't going to interrogate him. Yeah, they fully did. And they fully did. Yeah. They were like really bothering him. Yeah. And then he gets up and he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just like dresses up and like has a gun. He <laughs> fully has a gun and Art comes inside. And is like, how the hell did you get that through security? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Post 9-11 world. Yeah, would never no, not just that, but he goes diplomatic community, community which yeah. makes no sense. And then, and then uh, what's his name? Art makes a joke where he's like, that restores my faith in airport security. Yeah. <laughs> As Schwartzy is leaving, Larry tells Art that he has to take care of him and like basically babysit him. And Art asks why he gets the shit jobs, and Larry says because it suits you. They hate each other they so hate much. Each other so much. And then, <laughs> but then, and then didn't yeah. Larry talk with the the chief right after that? Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love this part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when when uh, Art and Danko leave. Larry. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's that's actually after. Is that later? Uh, that is a bit later. What okay. happens is uh, uh, Ivan changes into his regular people clothing. Oh yeah, and he calls him Gumby. Yeah, he calls him Gumby, which <laughs> I, I love Gumby out loud. I was like Gumby, what a fucking reference! And he's like, I'm I work undercover now. Um, <laughs> And I like that they're, they they start at this point. It seems like they're starting to build a relationship together yeah, because yeah, they yeah. force totally. together. Um, and it, then Belushi says, "Why do I get the 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 shit jobs?" And essentially, this is where where Lawrence Fishburne and Peter Boyle start yeah, talking, yeah. and they're like they sort of break down um, like Ivan Danko's like. <laughs> not Ivan Danko. You're talking about no, Victor. no Victor's. The, oh, Victor's dad. Yeah, Victor's, yeah, yeah. Dad Victor's dad was this like weird pillager and raper. Yeah, yeah. It was like, essentially Conan. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> and this is the only part really that anyone kind of judges him. This is the only part that Larry kind of judges him. He's like, he's like. So uh, in Russia, this kind of stuff happens. And towards he was like a long time ago. Well, th- that was yeah, the and weird- it's like not according to these reports. <laughs> 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 and then they list uh, Victor's stuff, and they're just like racketeering, rape, prostitute, like every like everything, drug trafficking. Yeah, drug He's trafficking. He He's murdered. just everything. He's done. He's everything. just an awful and, dude. And I love that Larry crumples the piece of paper and throws it in his boss's office yeah. on the floor. <laughs> D- Danko and. And and um, uh, Belushi uh, leave. I'm just going to switch their names. It doesn't matter. Uh, but what's his name? Peter Boyle says uh, that Danko is the perfect weapon. A loose cannon. Uh, oh, yeah. So- and if he screws up. It's the Russians. The Russians did it. Yeah, Peter Boyle in this scene is kind of like hedging his bets. And he's like, yeah, let's just see how this plays out. I mean, if we put our worst cop on it. 
who's yeah. all loose cannon <laughs> and this like German or this Russian German guy. Like, let's just, you know, let's just see how this plays out. And um, and Larry's like, all right. <laughs> yeah, he is. He, he seems like the only person who's kind of apprehensive because he seems like like a button up kind of guy where it's like, totally. oh, yeah, I follow the rules. I love like, his character. I love his it's character, so good. too. He's really great. Um, Ivan and Art walk to their car and um, he has J- J- Jim Belushi has a great line where he's like, we're not even going to touch his ass and and ivan goes i don't want to touch his ass <laughs> and it's like such a bizarre like really funny moment yeah. but it's played for it's played for laughs and it's like wholly a character thing it's not like oh it's just a one-liner that he's gonna have you know well, when he says the touching ass line it's because he's talking about he's talking about streak and streak is the like police informant of gallagher and he's like all right schwartzy uh, you know, like we have rights in this country and you can't just like beat people up for information. So it's something called Miranda rights and just like, don't touch this guy. And they walk in and Schwartzy immediately like pins him down onto the table. He's, he's like, like, where is Victor? <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and, and the witnesses or the witness, uh, what was it called? Again? The, 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 in police in, informant. The, the informant is played by Brian James, who's also a character actor. He has 172 acting credits. Brian James is from from Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Yeah, Blade, Blade right. Runner. He's from Blade Runner. Fifth Element. Fifth Element. One yes. of my all time favorite movies. Cabin movie. Boy. Cabin Boy. And also. can we just can we please acknowledge that he was rocking the bleached balding hair oh, before totally. anyone oh, was? It was classic. That is pure Hogan. <laughs> I love bleached blonde. A, bleached balding. <laughs> that's an aggressive salad. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the best way, the best and most interesting thing about this scene is um, Art telling Ivan, "Don't, don't do this. We're in America. We have Miranda rights." And then immediately proceeds to bribe him. Yeah. Which you oh think no, I blackmail bribe, him. You put think, him. Hold on, hold on. You think he's gonna bribe him? He puts oh, yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. bucks in his pocket to tell him where he is. And then when he doesn't, he pulls out a heroin. Of heroin, heroin yeah. And is like, uh, <laughs> what a sleazy move. That's such a shitty move. Um, he's like, I smell some heroin on you. Oh, that was. And amazing. then Schwartz is like, you were lying to him. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Schwartz he like, fucking calls him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's like, you can't just because okay, so Schwartz. Schwartz he gets the information out of him by breaking his arm. Yeah. And then he's like, okay. No, he breaks his fingers. And, and he goes, he goes, for before he says that, he goes, uh, see, capitalism works. Yeah, yeah. And then he pl- and then he just plants drugs on him. And then they break his hand to get the information. They both leave. And Schwartz he just goes. The Soviet method is more economical, which is incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, such yeah. a great line. It's such a like blend of like how terrible capitalism is, but also how terrible the, the Soviet Union was. Right. Oh yeah, um, he goes, Miranda, your country is okay with lying and putting drugs in pocket. And he was like, okay, I was a little out of line there. And yeah. then he goes, we both Schwartz, he goes, we both went go too far. Which was great. I loved. So I wrote this this quote down at the end of it when he was like, when he was talking to Brian James, he's like, "Are you sure you're giving me all the information?" And then Brian James is like, "I swear on my balls, man. I don't know." <laughs> oh, it's so good. I love that. That yeah. plays in later too because he tells him about Abdul Elijah, who is uh, like a basically a crime kingpin who's running. Basically, and uh, he's running the cleanhead gang from inside prison, mm-hmm. and. What a he, hero. Oh, my favorite oh, hero. I want to watch, watch that movie. That would have been a sick movie. That yeah, would have been yeah, an yeah. amazing Just a movie. a spin-off movie with that yeah, dude yeah. would be incredible. Oh. Yeah. And then an origin story prequel. Yes. Totally. That dude was so compelling. So compelling. So cool. And right before we meet him... Uh, John Belushi tries to like get access to him and one of his henchmen, one of the the clean heads goes um, uh, like John Bel- Jim Belushi goes, uh, this man came all the, all the way from Russia and he's like, well, that's nice. But who the fuck are you? <laughs> Which yeah. is such a great line. It's so good. So how did you guess about, how did you guess? about this scene? They actually had a deleted scene where Schwartzy actually fights the clean heads. Yeah. What? It, yeah, yeah, to like prove his dominance or whatever. Nice. But like, I think they just cut it because like, I don't even know if that would make sense. That wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't have worked. Yeah, it's not he, happening in a prison. He, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, exactly. He also, well, they do a weird thing because yeah, the guard the brings like, over. Welcome to their country. And he's like, 
uh, well, you're on your own now. Bye. Yeah, He's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and they're so they have kind of like an empire within in the the prison. And yeah. this is where they have like the really cool socio political, socio economical stuff with like this scene was so juicy. I love. Abdul Elijah. He is amazing. Well, let, let me contextualize it first. Uh, so Schwartzy talks to Abdul Elijah, a man with glasses and little, little tiny hair, because yeah. he's like top dog. He doesn't have to shave his head. He doesn't hair have to whatever. shave his head to prove his loyalty. Yeah, because yeah, they are they're called clean heads because they have shaved because heads. Because they prove their loyalties. Yeah. Um it's a real and, top dog move. Yeah. Um he Schwartzy says, You ship drugs to my country. You'll find your testicles next to your bed yeah. because the implication is that um, he's been sending drugs to different parts of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in order to bring on what is assumed to be some sort of revolution to get like white people hooked to drugs. Yeah, dude, he's yeah. He calls himself a political <laughs> prisoner. Yeah, a he holy says, man amazing. Who yeah, a holy yeah, yeah. man who has no need for testicles. Yeah, yeah, and that he's like, well, then we'll take your eyes, and he reveals that he has milky white eyes and he can't see <laughs> you just wanted to say milky white eyes. oh my god it was amazing oh, i love that and scene he's got the so line much. you can't threaten me white boy oh you know what my crime is my crime is being born this oh. country was built on exploiting the black man i hear i don't hear about brothers in your country but of course your country exploits its people too i was like and then he goes and then he so says, that's that makes me the only marxist i was like oh, oh my god this brilliant like Everything about this scene was incredible. Such weird attention, bizarre attention to detail. He calls himself the only Marxist. Yeah, That's the, an unbelievable line. Super yeah. nuanced. Never, like at one point you're meant to be like a little bit scared of him, but at the same time, like he he seems to have, like Schwartz, he seems to have like total like no, respect. he's totally the most lucid character in this movie. It's crazy. Who sees things exactly the way they totally. are. None of the other characters do have the insight that he does in any way in this movie but mm -hmm. it's so bizarre it's also really bizarre to have again like walter hill participate in something right the writing of this movie because he's not he doesn't seem like the most progressive guy either you know he says of the 38 years he's been alive he's been incarcerated for 26, 26 of them yeah. oh. and he educated himself inside so cool so cool yeah. and Oh, he says, uh, you see, this uh, this ain't no, uh, this this ain't just no drug deal. It's political, baby. It's economics. I plan to sell drugs to every white man in the world. And, <laughs> and his sister. sister. <laughs> yeah, that was and so his sister. cool. So good. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Good. Also, there's this weird sidebar in the next scene uh, when uh, um, Ivan and Art are talking about how Ivan had a parakeet. Yes. Yeah, that's like, when they're driving in the car. Yeah. Well, and this is the, the this is the scene I wanted to talk about where Art says his first like slur. He calls him, he calls Elijah Abdul a jazzbo. Oh, I didn't I Oh, didn't, I didn't notice I that. Didn't Did you not that, notice yeah. that? Ooh, yeah, I was like Yeah, I remember it, but I, I That I'm like, is like ooh. I was like, that's bad like that's like that's, <laughs> that's like harsh. a yeah. like because that's a really racist thing to say yeah. he says you were talking to what is it what does it mean i've never I heard that term. i think it's just like a, a like a like a associating black americans with jazz music but in kind of like a derogatory slurry way if you, you look it up, up jazzbo yeah 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 it's it, there's, i wonder if it's a, like a, a real slur i mean a real no like, apparently like slur. in the in the like um uh, oh yeah there so on uh dictionary yes uh jazzbo informally it's a noun informally it is a jazz musician or jazz enthusiast archaic or in for archaic informal is a person, especially a black man. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's That's like what a, comes up as a what's Google. those what's the the slang Wikipedia, you know, the like slang Urban website Urban Dictionary. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like what's Wikipedia. The slang? You're like the whitest dude in the world. <laughs> so what, what's that slang Wikipedia? <laughs> so the dictionary or well, Urban Dictionary <laughs> says it references this movie actually it, for the word for that word. Really? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. The no, this was one of the best jokes 
the best setups and the best punchlines for this joke was with, with the parakeet. Oh, the parakeet. The watch. Yeah, yeah, pardon me. Yeah, pardon when me. his watch dings. Schwartz's watch dings, and he says, it's time to feed my parakeet. And Art kind of is weirdly judgmental about it, but in this, like, aggressively, like, way, in this aggressive way where he's like, no, no, it's totally cool, man. <laughs> like, he was like, no, you got a parakeet. That's totally fine. He's like, you think it's feminine? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Schwartz, You think so a ins- parakeet is feminine? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he gets so insecure about it. So and I no, like, I don't think he does. I think that's just another aspect of like a guy calling out Jim Belushi's bullshit. Oh, interesting. You think so? Yeah. I kind of thought. No, he he didn't sound embarrassed. He's like, wait, you you think a parakeet is feminine? Like, what the hell is wrong with you? He didn't say anything about it being feminine and he interpreted it that way. Yeah. No, I think that was him like seeing like. I know everybody knows what you're saying, Jim Belushi. Really? Everybody in this world gets that you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like <laughs> totally. And and just cuts right through that stuff. Like we get this. Everybody listening to that gets the subtext. He's just being like, what? Don't. Well, no, that that's not the case. Yeah, you are I just an so. idiot. I mean, he's also hyper hyper masculine so him him commenting on anything jim belushi saying well is like, i mean he's hyper masculine because he's like massive yeah for sure but his performance i don't think is necessarily no that's true hyper masculine that's, that's true he plays very vulnerable in this movie he does he really really very, does yeah very, yeah yeah this um, was i think one of the first of the vulnerable schwartzies not just that but also like super divergent are you also divergent friend from the general like charming like charming likable kind of guy and totally. he's super charming likable still okay but. i wanted to talk about how many ch- like chances schwartzy was taking in this movie totally he was being completely different than he's ever been and he really hit the ball out of the park with this movie i yeah. think with his acting yeah, yeah it's a very subtle but incredible performance super incredible yeah no he's gigantic but awesome yeah he's gigantic and awesome yeah totally okay. totally nice. i have a how did you guess how did you guess for, for jim belushi gained weight well schwartzy lost weight for the movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I read that too. Walter Amazing. Hill I mean, wanted Schwartzy to be leaner totally. and Jim Belushi to be thicker. <laughs> um, okay. We cut to Gina Gershon, guys, and she is amazing. Super she's, 80s dancing. More 80s dancing. Oh, she's just doing her, like, fucking Paula Abdul moves. It's amazing. <laughs> and, guys, can we talk for a second about Joe Pantaleone and Jennifer Tilly in the movie Bound. Love that movie. The most amazing fucking Gina Gershon performance. Oh, love that movie. Love that yeah, movie so such much. A great it's movie. Such a le- do you know that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I do. I do. I do. I uh, I have always thought that Gina Gershon was just stunning. Yeah. Uh, this movie was weird for me. I had to take a break because watching this, uh, and I made a note specifically not to talk about this. When I like, I wrote this down. These things that I'm thinking and feeling, and then wrote down. Also, don't don't talk about this. Um, but no, it, she uh, she she reminds me a lot of uh, a, a an ex girlfriend of mine who uh, was was quite a handful. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. No. Anyway. Anyway. You're, yeah. You're, you're a bad person. We're gonna cut this out. No. I'm yeah. Kidding. No. I know. <laughs> Um, no, she just does, and it was difficult. Like that, that was very triggering. It was a very yeah, triggering relationship because sure. she was, uh, she wasn't great. Yeah, she wasn't great. This, this, this was a really hard experience for Adam. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I wasn't saying like this is a handful, as in like, oh, look actually, at her being hot. No, no, no. She was uh, an abusive alcoholic. Gave me a concussion. Oh, oh black dude, guy. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean to no, no, make no. Light of that, but also <laughs> looks a lot like a young Gina Gershon. I really love Gina Gershon in this. This is why I didn't want to talk about this. Sorry. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Next scene, they're in their dance studio office and Gina Gershon is not having any of these guys shit. She's like, hey, uh, I want to see some idea, right? And uh, Art is like, here, I'm a Chicago police detective and this guy's from Russia. So, um, you know, we're just looking for Victor. And can you tell us where he is? And... Also, to get this out of the way, like, obviously a nothing role with a spectacular person to, like, bear the brunt weight of of having a nothing role. 
You know what I mean? Like she does so much more than the script actually gives oh her. God. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Can I just say the the okay, so this movie is really not great to women or about women. Um it has one woman character in it. The others are just bit parts and I think that there are interesting character quirks associated with Gina Gershon's character that I don't know how intentional they were, but they decided to make her a dance instructor for youth, for at-risk youth who want, they want with this dance program to prevent people from going out and doing drugs. getting into drugs and stuff. Yeah. Which is like, they imply that it's kind of like a government funded program, which is kind of like this like capitalism and social aspect that I felt like they were Balance. yeah, putting in this movie, which I thought was really interesting. And the fact that they made the only woman character in this movie that of any note be a woman who does something so kind noble. of noble. Yeah, it would have been yeah. really easy just to make her like a stripper. Yeah, for sure. And she is a sex worker, which is how she meets Victor. Okay. Because this is implied when Art says... Oh, you're you're basically just like a call girl. Like he's kind of like being like a jerk yeah, to her. Yeah, flippant and and a, uh, you know a bad person. But she doesn't have any of it because she tells him to fuck off. Yeah, she's like, the I don't have to take this shit. Like they, she really holds her own. She's just like, no, I'm not taking this shit. Fuck but off. Also, she goes to leave. Um, and Schwartzy does a move that he's done in several other where movies he grabs where the he woman grabs by her the arms. woman by, by her arms in and like sternly looks, way. um, and, and is like, but also says something where it's like, but somebody's in trouble and more people will die. Like, it's like every line makes it about being a nice guy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I called Schwartzy, um, also, we just call him Schwartzy. We, we can't do it in any other way. <laughs> I call Schwartzy lawful, uh, lawful, um, what did I call him? I called him lawful neutral in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He very much is. Did you know that? No, uh, I'd say he's lawful good. He's, uh, But he's like kind of like, I'm just following orders. I'm so pragmatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but then I think that's where he gets to like. Uh, not chaotic good. Yeah, lawful. chaotic good. He chaotic goes from good? lawful good to chaotic oh, yeah, good. Yeah, he goes to That's chaotic true. after. He gets yeah, pretty yeah. outrageous. He's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. He so outrageous. And he okay. need, and guys, he needs capitalism to do that. <laughs> That's true. the moral of the story. It's true. Okay, Ivan Danko fucking says, "Okay, some people will die. Come on!" And she lets down her hair and she goes, "All right." <laughs> The fact that you include that. She lets down her hair and goes, he told me to go to Hotel Garvin and to get his old room and where to look. And there she found a passport and a hundred dollar bill torn in half. And this was the signal to the clear heads. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Sweet. The clean heads. Also, when they when they leave, he, uh, Jim Belushi has a line, I'm going to bust that bitch till she bounces. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. I was like, that was such a like, whoa dude like that's so violent it's so aggressive it's so like and it's so like misogynistic like yeah. just I mean, like fully hates her because she's a woman yeah but I also mean, alliteration yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh and it, she like it's it's strange because like all like i don't i expect more of the cops this is the strange contrast between all the other cops in the movie is that i expect more of the cops to act like a chicago policeman like that than i do being accommodating to some russian guy and like being a nice guy to most people you know what i mean that's true do you think in 2019 we'd get to hear a main character in a thing say a line like this yeah do you think we I would? Do. I do. Like, say say a line like that. But it would be it would be looked at through a much more critical lens. I just watched... Do you a, think so? Yeah. I just watched a, a movie called Dragged Across Concrete, which is all fully about, um, like, the racism, misogyny within police, but handled in such a, like, razor's edge way of, like, is this movie like this? Or is this... It's, like, very much in line with this kind of movie, but hypercritical of it. Interesting. Really interesting stuff. So Danko wants to find out where Victor is. Yeah. And he uses he uses Gina Gershon's character to 
find where Victor is. Yeah, they go out. Uh, Jim Belushi and Schwartzy go out to the car to stake out her apartment until she leaves. Uh, and then there's this funny interaction uh, where Ivan's like, give me the car keys. I'll wait in the car. And he's like, I, if you break the car, I'll have to be filling paperwork the rest of my life. And then Schwartzy sits in the car. <laughs> I love the paperwork, the line. paperwork line. It was such a, like an excuse for cops in the 80s. Totally. Of like, oh man, I gotta do all this paperwork. <laughs> It made it seem like cops had to do so much paperwork. I guess they do, but like, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, that's the bulk of their job. Yeah, yeah. There was so much, there was so much of this movie that was gen, like, it felt like, yeah, I, I believe this. Yeah. There totally. was so much just ludicrous, you know, stuff going on, but like based in something that I could actually believe was happening. Because Jim Belushi is kind of like a cop that really hates cops. He's like an everyman because he's like, oh man, cops, they're never around when you need them. <laughs> totally, totally. And then, and then at one point, like, like Schwartz, he's just in the car waiting and this guy comes out with a bat. And yeah, yeah, like, you're in my spot. You're in my parking spot. And Schwartz, just punches him. <laughs> and and says, the Miranda. Oh, yeah. do you know Miranda? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I never heard of the bitch. And he punches <laughs> her in the face and goes, Hooligani. Oh, I love the Hooligani line. And then when Art comes back, he's like, no problems at all. And Art's like, is that why some dude's lying here on the ground? <laughs> oh, no. He goes, what about that sack of shit on the sidewalk? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he doesn't have respect for him, but he also is mad that Schwartzy hit totally, him. Totally, totally. And Schwartzy goes, he lives here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he tells Schwartzy that Tatamovich is pulling out of his coma and that they should go to the hospital to interrogate him. Yeah, yeah. But just then, Gina Gershon leaves in a cab and Schwartzy follows her and spills hot coffee all over the oh, dick. Oh, yeah. Of fucking <laughs> I'm going to look like I pissed yeah. myself all night. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to burn my dick off. Yeah. And he has another line where he's like, you boiled my eggs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Such a weird line. Oh, and he says, glorious. He says, calm down. He's like, I have the car under control. And then he's like, uh, he says socialist countries don't have insurance. And he's like, oh, well, if your country's such a paradise, why do you have drugs as well? And then he's like, well, in China, they handle their drug problem by gathering all the drug dealers, dealers and, and the drug the, addicts yeah. and shooting them in the back of the head. And yeah. instead in public, in instead public square. of like. Schwartzy, instead of Art judging that, he's like, yeah, well, the fucking politicians would never go for that here. And then Schwartzy goes, we would do that to them, too. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. I Uh, love that so much. That interaction. Because it was like they connected on this like weird Yahoo libertarian level. It was amazing. But like from totally different ideologies. Totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. Jim Belushi's character. Like watching this, I really felt like I was getting an insight into what a caricature that as a Canadian I have of Trump supporting voters Interesting. in yeah. the U.S. Like I, I get that it's not accurate, but it is a stereotype that's propagated up here. And seeing that, rec- like recognizing that in him was really awesome because he does strike me as the type of person who like uh like is like yeah fucking cops but also i will kill you if you do not support the troops yeah for sure totally. 100% and also uh, with within this uh, stretch of like man i kind of like this guy i kind of don't want you know what i mean i never had that experience i did not like this guy from the start no 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 for, i mean like, i get it no, i get no, he's got like, yeah I, i'm talking about like i'm talking about the real life parable of like oh, not yeah, the outrageous yeah, 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 yeah. like 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 he's clearly a piece of shit i'm just saying that like there are people that i know that i'm like i fully don't believe your politics i hate that you believe this thing yeah, yeah but yeah. overall like 90 percent of you is like the sweetest person in the world you know what i mean yeah and yeah, it yeah. sucks it sucks to have that kind of thing you yeah, know like the the aliens uh the the comics about oh, the aliens yeah, the guy the guy who's uh yeah the guy like, who like anti- everybody anti-abortion. loves yeah but yeah. is anti-abortion so people are like oh yeah and then he came out with a public statement yeah which was like i mean it was it, fine it made it yeah. worse though like because he was like I think he was like, yeah, I still believe this pretty much. Well, he's like, this is, I think he was just like, this is the thing that I believe for me, but people can do what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So can we just say that 
it's revealed that one of the clean heads is driving the taxi that Gina Gershon is in and they're leading our leading actors into a trap. Mm -hmm. And so they lead them into an underground parking lot and they get ambushed by a van full of clean heads. And Art says like the super racist line here. This was like a fucking punch in the face for me. I was like, look at this man. We have a basketball team. Oh yeah. Headed our, or a pro basketball team headed for us. And And they've got guns. We've encar- we've encountered a lot of sexism in Schwartzy movies and misogyny, but I don't think that we've detected this heavy a racism. There's been light, like sort of like in implied racism, but this has been like the most like this guy's like saying slurs. Totally, and, like, totally. This is not me justifying anything. This is not. This is what. This is why I think my brother <laughs> prefaces everything with with the way he taught. We had the conversation before. I think that in this movie, the amount of, and this is linked back to what Lee said about Predator as well, the kinds of nuances that are put in in the movie, um, in certain kinds of Schwartzy movies, and um, is really fascinating because we get this nuanced view of Abdullah Elijah Mm -hmm. being this, this kind of character with so much depth. That we get it contrasted with with John Belushi, uh, J- Jim Belushi, as opposed to. I, I figure. I think I figured out why why my brother and I have have a problem with how we frame things in in this our our podcast. Are you having a revelation on, on the podcast? I here? am. I am. When I think something is racist, I think of the act of racism. And when my brother thinks of racist, he's thinking of the overarching racism of a thing. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, so like, I'm I'm thinking of it in a way, in, in this movie specifically, in a way of one character is contrasting with another and there's a discussion of racism. Whereas the way my brother is framing it in this current moment is that it is racist. This movie is racist. That's where I think our misinterpretation of each other's views is happening, particularly with the sexism. But like in this context, I think that this, like this guy, it's a Russian guy and a Chicago cop. Like, Obviously, no, they're you're, both racist. You're right. You know I mean? You're totally right. But Schwartz is less racist than Art is. I fully think that that's a hundred percent true. I think he has a more of a respect for for like black people because the. I think he right. under in it, it seems like he understands that like black people were exploited by a capitalist system. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I I do want to talk about. Um, I do want to talk about how the clean heads are headed towards the car and they're armed with like assault rifles and Danko gives Art the key to hide in his underwear and they get out and Gina Gershon says, I'm supposed to tell you that this peace truce was arranged by a guy named Abdul and you're supposed to surrender your guns, which was so cool because she set them up, but for something that Abdul set from prison that he was going to make happen. Yeah. So really he was going to awesome. broker this meeting where Schwartz, gets to meet with Victor unarmed. This was such a complicated setup, yeah. but it's so believable. I think totally believable. And then, no, uh, what's his name? Jim Belushi has the line, a Chicago cop never relinquishes his gun. And they all point the guns at him. And he's yeah, like, he's like okay. okay, there you go. <laughs> I love Brilliant that. Timing. They such synchronized good. it like so comedically. I love it. So great. It. Yeah. And Gina Gershon's like, I've had enough of this macho bullshit. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> this is the second in, in commando. Um, the main female lead in Commando, what was her name again? Cindy. Yeah. Cindy fucking calls out Schwartzy for being too macho with Bill Duke. Yeah. And in this scene, she calls them out for being too macho. And it's so great because there's so much like kind of weird posturing. Yeah, I think that there's one of the things that I really like, and I think this is a common thread in, in a lot of Schwartzy movies, is that like there there is this like nod to how ridiculous he is as like a persona <laughs> as a human just being universally like which is his... why people didn't take him seriously as an actor yeah 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 totally. yeah, yeah, yeah there's like this huge like he's massive yeah. he is like no makeup no nothing no even like changes to his schedule and he can pass as a giant cyborg from the future yeah totally <laughs> totally like, <laughs> and so, like and he, you're like wow you know he's got a massive sword that's that's cuz he is actually Massive. Like a, a, a barbarian lord. Yeah. Like this is he's doing nothing different. 
This is just who he is. And like acknowledging that stuff in really funny ways. Uh, and like talking about that macho stuff and like um, the character in True Lies, the guy who like copies all his moves and he's just like this. The, do you remember that one? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that kind of stuff. It seems like there's there's often these like other characters who were kind of like foils. Oh yeah, to like his... Tom Arnold. You're talking about Tom Arnold. No, 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 not Tom. Well, Tom Arnold. Oh, Bill yes. Paxton's Bill character. Paxton. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bishop, hey man. Bill Paxton is That's kind of like the foil to yeah. that that character and that that like Arnie persona. Totally, because he wants to be that kind of person. Yeah, so guys, fucking. Uh, the leader of the Cleanheads says to Schwartzy that he's gonna blow Art's head off if he if anything bad goes down, and then he sends him to this secluded part of the of the underground parking lot to meet with Victor. Victor, oh, yeah. this that was, was such, such a great, a great scene. scene. Okay, so Victor really reveals so much interesting nuance. This was my second favorite character moment in this movie, next to the Abdul Elijah scene. Yeah, yeah. I just need to comment on how they're talking. Um, they're speaking in Russian at first, and then they do this amazing switch to English, but in Russian accents, because they were just like, I love that the eighties did this, like had people who speak a um, mutual first language speak in not their first language <laughs> just for the audience, yeah, for but sure. with outrageous accents. I just thought that was like a cool touch. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's I like just an economy of storytelling. I don't need to care why they don't speak their own language. You know what I mean? Sometimes it takes yeah. me out, but but the 80s, I'm totally okay with it. Yeah, I think that might also have to do with like, no, it probably doesn't. But to look at it on like a meta level of interpretation, you could say that like, this is them acknowledging that they're in a foreign place and they have to adhere to foreign rules. Oh, and interesting. Rules I never really, would have thought of that. That is really cool. I like yeah. that. Um, he has one, uh, Victor has a line where he goes, goes uh, the people have many needs. One of them is law and order and the other is entertainment, Ooh. which seemed like a direct comment on the actual movie yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love this because he's like, hey, so capitalism's coming to Russia no matter what. And the first taste of freedom is cocaine. Yeah. He, he this was like, was any so country. interesting. It's such a like cultural criticism yeah. about capitalism, about communism. It talks about like drugs and freedom. Yeah. It's and also how- a remarkable description of cocaine. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> any, any country that can survive Stalin can survive a little dope. That I was love such this a great so line. Much. Oh, yeah. uh, the fact that they he acknowledge- sees himself as filling a need. Totally. Totally. Um, it, 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 then and then getting to brass tacks of like you killed my friend you killed my brother you know what i mean like oh, this was so good because it was such a negotiation at first he's like hey so let me do this give me the key because i want the money and like let's not fuck around here like capitalism's coming you know he was fighting with ideology and then after when it got personal he's like you killed my friend well you killed my fucking brother yeah, totally. and it got like it was like because at first he says, we both have our roles. You are the state and I'm with the thieves. Yeah. So he sees them as like two polar, yeah. like two sides of the same hey, coin. It's a tale of two cities. Yeah, totally. It was the worst of times. It was the bluest of times. Yeah. <laughs> um, you should get off your high horse. Let's talk business. You have my key and I need it quite bad. And he offers him more money than he can make in 10 years. And Danko is just like, no, I don't sell drugs. And Victor's like, all right, there's no negotiating with you. So I thought I'd be reasonable. And money has a way of doing that to a man. But you're one of those Soviets that only looks forward to death. I wrote that down too. This, was, this line, line was such a gut punch because I was like, it made me think so much of Winston in 1984 where he's just like, hoping to die he's just like i'm just wanting the sweet release of death yeah. but i love the system so much yeah, yeah. there's just this disillusion with the system that was so nuanced and interesting they leave and art is pissed that danko it was like that left him just holding his dick in his hands yeah and danko was like hey let's get right down to business and head to the hospital to question tatamovich <laughs> he's just like not even having it i really like this i really like this uh interaction between them because they, he goes um, we in America never let our partners stand alone with our dicks in our hands and a, our, a gun in our ears. Uh, and it was interesting because he acknowledged him as like his partner. Like he was like, oh, oh. no, you're my, you're my partner. Like you're in, we're together in this. We're yeah. cops, you know? The next scene, um, uh, we see a, a man dressed in drag uh, killing uh it's uh, not a man dressed in drag. It's someone pretending to be a nurse. No? 
Well, they, they, can't, they, they keep they, saying they, they, they call, yeah. but they call it out. I thought this was interesting because, okay, so one of Victor's associates is in the hospital getting to Tatemovich to kill him before he has the chance to say anything to yeah, Schwartzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they know that if Schwartzy gets to Tatemovich, he's going to get information out of yeah. him. So they want to preemptively kill yeah, yeah. Tatemovich. And so the associate dresses in an outfit, like a nurse's outfit, and dresses like as a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is, is that not drag? No? Well, I mean, like drag is like a, a subculture and it's like, it's, there's a lot more to drag than just like cross-dressing. Yeah, but I guess it's, I wouldn't even call that cross-dressing because cross-dressing is like, I like to wear women's clothing. This was like, I'm dressing to pretend to be something. I'm yeah, but performing that's, this role. Oh, interesting. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's- Oh, interesting. That, like, so he would take it seriously as drag. Yeah, he's not like, he's not like- No, that's, 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 that's not what's happening. That's a massive stretch. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, a stretch? No. He wore yeah, a that's, wig? Yeah, that's a, that's a huge stretch. No, it's just a, an assassin dressing up as okay. a, as a All female right. nurse. I don't think it's a comment on- No, I don't think it's a comment on it. They just use the term drag. Is that like not? not No, no, no. They no. Oh, oh, (laughs) we're talking about the terms they're using. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not just what they're using. They're like, uh, what do they say? It was like that trans line. uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, was like uh, the real, Russian uh, witness was killed by a transvestite, and then they said drag queen, and dra- they, yeah, 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 yeah. So they used all these different like. Yeah, yeah I'm not saying I'm not saying different... it's good. <laughs> I'm not oh, saying it's good. I didn't know you were quoting things. Miss, <laughs> He's like, oh, they were dressed in drag. Yeah, 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 I yeah, know, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, no, no. Art sees Tatemovich is dead, and Danko realizes that it was the nurse, and they start running after the nurse. And they split up to find her in the hospital with tense music and she's running down the escalator and there's a prolonged woman's scream that happens in this scene that I loved so much. It sounded like the sample that they use for Toad falling in Mario Kart 64. <laughs> the, ah! <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah, know yeah. what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Art draws his gun on the fake nurse. But Gina Gershon is like, Hey, don't shoot this person. This was weird to me. Why? Yeah, where did she, did she come from? Yeah, and why is she defending this guy? Like she doesn't even know him. I mean, there, she doesn't it, even know him. Was, wasn't <laughs> she friends with? Wasn't she? Didn't she know him through Danko? Like, or so, no, uh, not Danko. Uh, for for through Victor. How did you guess? How did you guess? They filmed more subplot about mm. the wife in this, and then they decided to cut it, which is why these scenes made no sense. <laughs> Oh, okay. Isn't right. that yeah. so funny? That's great. But I liked that they had some weird. <laughs> I liked that they had like a weird subplot together. Why not? Yeah. Okay. An they implied subplot. Other. Yeah. I love that. It would make sense. Yeah. So she protects him, and then Schwartzy shoots him like seventeen times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many. He shoots him so many times, and the guy's still alive. And then he dies, and they they check him, and they're like, and okay. Fucking Art has his like R traps oh, gay, gay moment gay, but, yeah. where he's like, "Oh my god, it's a man!" Because <laughs> he like makes it like a comment yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. how he finds the nurse so hot, and then yeah. when it's revealed it's a but man, you, he but, has like a gay panic no, moment. No, 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 but it's not. It's not quite a gay panic moment because it's it's. Oh. It's a guy like it's like disappointed more than than like freaking out. It wasn't like Do you think he's disappointed. It wasn't a woman so that he could find her attractive. Like that's the whole th- point. That's, right. Th- like, definitely. Definitely. That that is true. But like it wasn't like like in twins where it was like, oh, don't do that. It was like, oh, damn. It was like almost like he was disappointed. Like he wanted to and do it. a little like it, and homophobic. Um, oh. Also, what I noticed is that when they're to get where, when they're standing side by side, Jim Belushi and Schwartzy, Jim Belushi is a uh, uh, hundred and eight uh, centimeters. Oh, a uh, uh, hundred and eighty centimeters. centimeters. Yeah, meaning Schwartzy is not six foot two. He's yeah, fucking yeah, no, he's like five eleven, six yeah. foot or five eleven. Yeah, it's fine. We talk a lot about Schwartzy's height on this show because, yeah. like, it was always like debated and like. It says officially everywhere that he's 6'2", but he's not actually 6'2". Like, two. clearly like, he's just, not 6'2". Like, officially got into the record that he was 6'2", but he's not. Yeah. And it doesn't matter, but it's just weird that everyone wants to believe that he's 6'2". Or, like, there's this this collective sort of, like, um, kind of, like, omission of reality uh, uh, surrounding his height in reality. Here's the thing. 
objectively speaking, when you think about like what's considered a sexy height for a man, for some reason, six foot two is like what I generally have he- heard is like the general association. Do you of just like say that because the you're ideal six man's foot two? <laughs> You've ne- seriously though you've never heard that of course i've totally I, heard that totally yeah heard okay, that. okay okay yeah, yeah. okay yeah, I don't, had the- don't six foot two value shame me <laughs> okay i had don't a, gaslight I, me yeah it's, okay so i had a weird moment last night actually at a party this is going to be a thirsty for more segment um i fucking had a moment at a party last night where i was talking to a woman about height and this woman was saying how like you know they were talking about men who are taller than me and saying like, you know, oh my God, you know, this is six foot five is a definite plus, you know? And I was just like, whoa, like I'm six foot. And like, you know, that's like the beginning of tall, you know what I mean? So I've never really felt yeah. like six foot is the beginning of tall, yeah. right? It's yeah, not yeah, yeah. tall, but it's not short. It's like, no, no. he's tall, you know, yeah. he, he's, he's tall. You're above average. Yeah, exactly. But I had a moment where I was like, oh man, I'm, you know, I'm feeling a little sensitive about my height here. So like, I don't know. It was like a weird, like moment where I felt like emasculated. Yeah. And I it reacted to it. Yeah. Which was very weird for me. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry for that weird tangent. No, that's okay. About my, you know, fragile masculinity. Well, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Your small frame. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do yeah, not have a small even frame. Even though I'm the same height as We're you. the same We're build. We're built the same We're way. built the same. No, my, my, I have like like weird you have bigger boobi- torso boobies. oh you have boobies i don't uh, have the boobies, and you but... have like weird flat chest <laughs> like your your like meat hangs more down here and my like i have like weird like oh no boobies that I can't body really... shaming each other come what, on I'm man i'm not shaming anything i'm just describing no but you're so weirdly accurately describing in kind of a pejorative way <laughs> like it's like and you're saggy here and <laughs> no i didn't say you said saggy i, didn't, I said flat <laughs> Um, uh, uh, so is. short Schwartzy, Schwartzy has mercy on Gina Gershon, on Gina and, Gershon, but also says to her, he has 10 girls like this at home. He tells uh, Gina Gershon Jesus. that. So just for anyone listening, there was no cut or edit just there. You guys just went from this totally bonkers tangent <laughs> about body shaming each other. <laughs> Like same breath right back into the movie. Well, yeah, that's the weird what dynamic we that have. Was, yeah, that's I mean, what Jesus. makes this podcast work. I think. I this, feel like I'm doing cardio just sitting next to you guys. <laughs> this is the, this is the thing he was We're he like was, not getting letting Adam get a word in edgewise. No, this, this is uh, this is the funny thing about our arguments too. Is like like sometimes we'll get into these like hyper intense arguments and then be like. All right, dude, I'm sorry. This is what made me feel bad in this situation. Yeah, yeah. We have like weirdly vulnerable, honest conversations afterwards. That's what the audience doesn't get to hear. Yeah. Uh, but the Patreon donors of $10 <laughs> and above uh, will get access to that. Um, Hashtag Schwartzy Pod. Yeah. yeah. Brought um, to you by Casper Mattress. <laughs> no? Brought to you by Squarespace. <laughs> oh, man. Brought I wish to you we by got some of that buddy. Danko um, lies that Gina got away and Art's so pissed that Gina's gone. And he's pissed that the killing of the blonde accomplice happened because now they're both in the shit house. They're both like totally like, do you know we're so fucked, dude? And he's like, I don't know that we're so fucked, but they're so fucked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because they so they leave the hospital and then they go back to the station. They're like, you guys fucked up so bad. Do you have any idea how many how much money the two loose cannons cost the taxpayers? Oh yeah, for sure. But what's great about that scene too is that there's a, an acknowledgement on Peter Boyle's part that to to Lawrence Fishburne that that it's like no, oh, that was a terrible idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have done that. And it's like like that was also such a bizarre reflexive moment that never seems to happen with police. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Where he's like, oh my god, that was such a terrible idea. What the hell was I thinking? Yeah, it was great. It really was a terrible idea. Yeah, when yeah, he was yeah. Saying, it was like, awful. It, it, kind, it kind of made sense the way he said it because he like it sounded like he really convinced himself of it. Yeah, is no. basically what he said. The sequel to this is ten years from now when the class action lawsuit from the city of Chicago <laughs> finally <laughs> sees court. Totally, totally. So Boyle wants Art to write a full report about what happened, and Art assures him that he'll have it. And then Daco needs another gun because his gun was taken away by the police chief yeah. peter boyle and and then schwartz is like 
I'm going to get another gun. And he's like, oh, fuck, man, I can't give you another gun. All right, I'll give you another gun. <laughs> and he gives him a magnum and he's like, this is the best piece of like this is the best handgun made in the world and then Schwartz yeah. says some like fake Russian gun this gun is the best gun in the world and he's like are you kidding me man Dirty Harry uses a magnum and he's like who is Dirty Harry because <laughs> there's such too. a nod to like how Schwartz loves Clint Eastwood yeah and then we have uh, the scene in the diner which is I think like, yeah, a yeah, really yeah. actually I loved like, this scene. like sweet scene um, there's like a breakdown of uh like Art begins to ask him, like, "Hey, like, what are your friends like? What is your family like? What did your dad do, or whatever?" Yeah, and Schwartzy says he's never been married, but he's had girlfriends. Weird thing that keeps coming up, where it's like, "Incel are Schwartzy, you, are you a virgin?" And he's like, <laughs> yeah. "No, what do you mean?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because he kind of seems like so, like I don't know, he Virginal? seems <laughs> whatever that means. Okay, rigid. <laughs> yeah, somebody who's who's really uptight. So Schwartz's entire family's dead, and they both realize that, you know, they have very small family units. And they kind of relate over that, which was like a really nice and tender moment. And he says, I guess we won't be spending much time Christmas shopping. And he's like, I come from communism, dude. We don't <laughs> we don't Christmas shop. Um, and then, but he's so misogynistic towards the waitress. It yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm watching this so, thing like, dude, you are awful yeah, to that person so weirdly upsetting and like Schwartzy kind of like is annoyed by it and is judging him silently but they don't really acknowledge it yeah. it's like a really weird character scene yeah no he's like get lost i've got my coffee perfect and he's like all right i want more coffee <laughs> yo sweet cheeks <laughs> yeah. what's like, keeping you like yeah, that like, oh. it's, he's so weirdly impatient and then okay oh no hey sweet yo sweet cheeks while we're young yeah. Uh, Schwartzy gets back to the sleazy motel and the receptionist tells him that like he's got like so many messages and it's from Gina Gershon mm -hmm. and there's only one female character in this story. <laughs> like it's it's so upsetting. But she calls from a payphone and she's like, um, hey, uh, I want out of this shit, but I need kind of assurance that I'm going to be OK because I work as a um, like non for profit dance instructor. And I get paid $5 an hour. Yeah. Victor gave me $10,000 just to marry him. Like, that's where I'm at. Like, yeah, it was you, like, you do the math. Me. I'm just trying to get out of my shitty situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was so, I think, an under, sort of like an under the radar criticism of capitalism here. Because it's like, you know, it's really showing how people fall through the cracks and get chewed up and spit out sort of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do. I agree. Yeah. He's like... I assure you, I will help you in any way I can. But he's not very convincing. And she's like, all right, well, the deal's going down tonight. So you get to get, if you get Victor, I get to go free. I want my freedom back. It cuts to a scene where Art is doing some paperwork and he checks his messages and he realizes something too. His brother-in-law has called him and they're talking about his sister's alimony papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I was that. like, did they set this up or are they just introducing this almost at the end of the movie? I love it. I think that's great. <laughs> it was like, what is going on? I, yeah. I thought that, it, was that, that was unusual, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just, it was such so fantastic. Like I said, I just love the authenticity and the depth of world building yeah. that totally. went into this. Like it is totally, there's all these, like there's a couple goofy little asides, but they, they make you feel like every character has this like, legitimate full life going on and that's a big thing for uh an action cop dramedy yeah <laughs> cut to the clean heads who are being so cool and waiting in the rain and danko is like with them and they're staring into the hotel lobby just out in the rain and they see schwartzy putting a key up in a little like hidden yeah, where he's like, hiding the key under in the in the, the lamp. chandelier yeah, yeah, the yeah, chandelier. yeah. And then he walks away, goes to shower, and they head into the hotel room. And fucking Victor slams the face of the receptionist into the desk and then checks the paperwork of where Schwartzy is. And he sees that Schwartzy's in his room, room 303. And then it cuts to a naked woman in a hotel room. And they've sort of implied that the naked woman is in Schwartzy's room with the cutting. But then it's revealed the clean heads have the wrong room number and they break into the room and ask 
the the woman lying in bed where he is and she points to the washroom and they shoot her john because she's a sex worker and her john was showering and it turns out they're like wait it's not him this is really great because it it shows that Victor is like out for himself. Double crossing, yeah, double the, clean crossing heads. the clean heads. He doesn't have an ideology. He breaks into the room, steals the the key. Um, I found this. This was something that I noticed about a lot of Schwartzy movies too. The willingness and the trust that women have that just meet him. Oh my to God. To just like follow him around and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, what's going on? Where are we going? Well, like, let's go, let's get out of here. It's like, you don't know this person. Yeah. This I, guy could just be, just be as crazy as these people who shot this place she up. She so immediately trusts him for someone who's just seen death happen and who shot someone herself. It's like, why do you trust this guy? You don't like, and also... Wouldn't you be scared and want to run away? I don't know. It just didn't make any sense to me. I was like, this is so unreal. It was like the uh, Cindy from Commando who so immediately just I, yeah. trusts Schwartzy. And yeah. it's like, this is not earned. But this, but that, that I can sort of uh, like get behind. Because no, she get has behind. Stockholm syndrome? No, 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 no. Not just that. Well, yeah, potentially that. But I like, am there is blown a, away. The, the, yeah, yeah, go ahead. What were the, you going to say? What were you, I am blown away. Uh, that you used the the terms this person has just seen death happen that is that is just rocking me with its poetry oh wow <laughs> that is thank you that's outrageous I get to be around it all the time yeah. um, it's, I'm a majestic fella uh, yeah. but it's interesting because in Commando there is like a sort of comic book logic that movie moves in such a way that this movie doesn't this this person has a full life. <laughs> totally, and they do make her a really interesting character, yeah, and actually like, yeah. a testament to this this actress who is like amazing in this it's role, super, like yeah, this really bit good. nothing role that was written by misogynists. Like I feel like a lot of performances were saved by you know like actresses who were just really capable of doing really great work with the material in these movies. Yeah, yeah. We don't know that they were misogynists who wrote this movie, though. No, but uh, I mean, you can, you can, way, you can, can inductively from in, like, inductively yeah, he's just gonna decide. How, he's just gonna decide. Yeah. yeah. Um, how, yeah, you could, I could, I, I think if you talk to Walter, uh, Walter Hill, you could probably say he was misogynistic. Uh, all right, fair enough. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So we get to the aftermath uh, of the motel and everything is shot up. Yeah. <gasps> Shout out to Kurt Fuller. My name is Kurt Fuller. Who appears as a oh. sex <laughs> um, Oh my god, I wrote the dub too. He literally appears for two seconds. Two seconds. <laughs> it was amazing. It was such a it was such, it was such a bit part for such a like iconic that guy. You know what I mean? Like yeah, this yeah, guy yeah. is amazing. And he's in this scene for like Two seconds, and it's like, whoa, that's fucking Kurt Fuller. Yep, it's I great. love that so much. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I, I thought, I, I, like, I was like immediately like Kurt Fuller. This is him. my brother's gonna laugh. My name is Kurt Fuller. <laughs> I did. I laughed so much because I knew you were going to talk about oh, Kurt Fuller. I, I I loved it. I thought it was great. We hear from the news that. 24-year-old dance instructor's body was found, and it's Gina Gershon. She's dead. I love the way they really revealed this because you're just like, no! I know. Like, you're just, like, paying attention, and you're like, oh, my God. And it's revealed as fucking Victor is preparing with the, like, hidden gun yeah, in, yeah, his, yeah. in his sleeve. And you're just like, whoa, this guy's just evil. This guy's just a piece of shit. Yeah, and he totally. wants bad things to happen. He just killed her yeah. and then they reveal to Schwartzy and art that their actions have had direct impact because gina gershon is fucking dead yeah. like shit has hit the fan now like stuff yeah. is real and peter boyle is very real like i want these guys off the case and i want art like not working as a police officer anymore yeah and yeah, larry yeah. fishburne is like machine such a smug dick oh my god <laughs> oh, it was so good he leaves 
so hard into <laughs> being such a dick about I it. Loved it so totally much. justified. Yeah. It was incredible. It was amazing. And then it. he's like, and, then, and and like he has, um, what's his name? Has such a like shitty response. He's like, uh, stupid fucking goddamn Russians. Oh my God. And he goes, sorry, not you. <laughs> <laughs> so they go over to Art's brother-in-law's place and they, they like, they have, he has like, he you happens mean to work. Mike Haggerty, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful he's, character actor, he's... Mike Haggerty, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> "You, you and your friend want a goose step over here." <laughs> yeah. I thought that and line then, was amazing. And he has some like rush, goes, yeah, rush he, of he, panic he, lines. Yeah, he goes, he looks at the 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 books, and he's like, "It's all in English. Is that a problem for you?" <laughs> Art is like, come on, man, fuck off! Like, yeah, he's like totally, totally. he was like, like, leave this guy alone. He's all right, you know. Like, oh man, that, you're wow. seeing the growth of tolerance. Yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah, there. yeah. It's just like slight tolerance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, this guy's all right. They're because they're both piece of shit cops. Well, they're all they're also like like such like they're, they're, clearly from this interaction, I was like, oh, these guys are full working class dudes. Yeah, yeah. hold on, and that's hold on. They, is this movie the Rocky Four? <laughs> Of cop movies, Fully. and is it from the perspective of Ivan Drago? I, it could be. I it think could that's be. But we also, unfortunately, get a perspective from Ivan Drago in Creed too. So I don't know if you've seen that. No, who's no? seen Creed two? Oh, is man. it good? Creed? No, it's not good. Oh. But it, but it like fucking Dolph Lundgren in Creed two has this amazing subplot of how it's when, Dolph Lundgren. He's the best. Oh yeah. man. He, <laughs> I got to score some steroids. You know, Dolph Lundgren's got a PhD in chemistry. How did you guess? Yep. I did know He that. went to MIT. It's a yep. very good, how did you guess, Adam? Is it? A, oh, yeah. How did you guess? How did you guess? But yeah, I love this, like, alimony subplot. It was oh, my so God. It was so funny. good because, like, they go so deep into it. And you're like, whoa, this fight's lasting way too yeah, long. Yeah, like, they cut to them fighting in the scene. Which is a really good way of them revealing the boring plot of Schwartzy discovering the key the associated key number to like the location of the locker. Totally, totally. So like he's written down the number that was written on the key and he discovers that this key belongs to a locker in a bus terminal. Yeah. That's all we need to know from that. I mean, we already knew yeah, that. Yeah, but that's all. Beginning. Yeah, but like they have this key. They know it's a key. They don't know where it's from. Yeah. Jim Belushi knows his brother-in-law is a locksmith with a whole bunch of keys who could like easily just provide the solution. Yeah, it, the it solution was really practical and cool. Start. Art. But yeah. that it like they could have done this at the start of the movie. Yeah, totally. it was like yeah, it was like a weird, weird subplot to add so late in the game. But can I can I just point out something? Anytime somebody points out something like that in a movie, I always say that's true, but we also don't need Indiana Jones in the movie Indiana Jones because the Nazis would have found the Ark and destroyed themselves. He didn't need to go through the, all of that to get to the Ark. Do you know what I mean? Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it's like you're right. That's true. They could have done that at the beginning of the movie, but then we wouldn't have a movie. But neither, like, you wouldn't have an excellent movie like Indiana Jones either, you know? <laughs> Your face. <laughs> That's true. You don't need Indiana Jones. You don't need Indiana Jones. You did in Temple of Doom, though. You did. Yeah. And you do need... And you did, you do need... Chunya. Chunya. <laughs> I love that your impression of certain things is just adding ch in front of things. Yeah, I love fucking Sean Connery as the dad. Oh my god, they're 11 years apart. It's like, Junior. Junior. <laughs> and it's just because he's like a bald dude with like a, a gray beard. Yeah. Hair. Back to the movie. They find out that the key belongs to a locker in a bus terminal. And they cut to a cl the clean head leader who is in the bus terminal coffee shop doing a trade off with Victor. He gets the key and he goes to the washroom to check the suitcase of money out. And then Victor meets him there and he's like, hey, uh, he's kind of blindsided. He's like, uh, so uh, the drugs are coming at 930. You're all good. They're coming from El Paso. And he's like, uh, I trust you. And he's being so like, yeah, I'm so evil. And then... He kills him in a double cross. He fucking like shoots out his like um, hidden gun, gun yeah, from yeah. his sleeve and then shoots him. And I'm like, whoa, this dude just like has no ethics. He like he just double crossed this this these people who were like so 
committed to being fair to him. The ultimate capitalist, dude. It was so weird. Wow, yeah. yeah. yeah Bad like guys are himself, capitalists. Libertarian. You heard it here first. <laughs> Danko and Art arrive hastily to the terminal, and Art tells Danko that this is a Chicago police matter now, so please try not to be a hero. And Schwartz is like, I'm not on holiday here. And they like head out. And Victor has the money and he goes over to wait for a bus and he meets a drug dealer and he has the code. He's like, hey, do you have change for a hundred dollars? And the guy's like, I do. And they, sh- he matches. And they the t- space dock their bills. Oh, oh. I love this, the reveal of the space docking of the bills. <laughs> so good. And then he fucking says, your merchandise is in the uh, in the luggage trunks. And the drug dealer has a sweet pimp outfit. And Danko <laughs> arrives to see Victor at the bus terminal. And he says, you did not make it, Victor. And Art arrives and he's like, he arrives just after Danko. And he's like, no, this is a Chicago police matter. Chicago gets him first. And in a crazy reversal, Schwartz, points his gun, gun yeah. at fucking Art. And I was just like, oh my God. But this totally makes sense. It totally yeah, makes it's totally sense. within the character to do that. It's totally like like he's Mexican stands off between the bad guy and another good guy. And yeah. you're just like, whoa, this is such a bold move. And you can, you, <laughs> can, such a bold move, yeah. you can tell that Victor's like, oh, my God, dude. Oh, my God. What's going on? <laughs> like Victor's freaking out, too. And then um, a woman, an old woman walks into the shop. <laughs> Yeah. It's amazing. This is the most outrageous part of the movie. Like the ending and the climax is the most like, whoa, dude, like holy shit, what is yeah, happening? Yeah. And and Art yells, move! And they all shoot, and Victor runs away, and then they're chasing him around bus corners, and he gets into a bus and yeah. almost runs Schwartzy over, hits him with the open bus door, and then Schwartzy gets into another bus, <laughs> draws his gun yeah. at the poor bus driver who's like, hey man, like, yeah. <laughs> he's just like, holy shit, what's going on? And, he's like, get the fuck out of the bus. And, and, and then Art arrives just in time to get into the bus and he's like, were you going to leave without me? And of course he yeah, was. of course he was. Of course what he I, was. What I love about this moment too is that when the bus driver gets pulled out of the bus, the yeah. bus starts moving moving backwards because he didn't turn it off. I love that. And then they just start chasing each other with fucking buses. Yeah, it's a bus chase. It's so great. <laughs> the bus chase was amazing. It just was so, fantastic. I loved it. It was so enthralling the entire time it was on screen. Like oh, was every time there were buses chasing each other in this movie, I was like, I want more buses chasing yeah, each other. Yeah. And, and one of the buses was to Montreal and the other was to St. Louis, Louis. Which yeah, was yeah, nice. Yeah. That I was liked great. It. Uh, and then uh, he crashes through a fountain. Uh, Schwartzy crashes through a fountain and Belushi goes, oh man, fuck, that was a culture, uh, a that was Chicago a, landmark. Yeah, that was yeah. a Chicago <laughs> landmark. Because there's a train that intercepts the, like that cuts the road off. Victor has to pull the bus around and decides to play bus chicken with with Ivan Danko. And I was just like, I'm yeah. <laughs> living for this. It's just, yeah. it's so I, I, awesome. Every moment there was <laughs> bus chicken happening. Yeah. And they when they're driving at each other, and Schwarz is like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was like such an outrageous, and amazing the, scream. The only reason they don't die is because. Like, Art is there to pull Schwartzy to the side. They were fully going to kill each other. Yep. And, and and they flip buses over, respectively, because one guy slams into a train and the other guy, like, flips the bus <laughs> over. over. And he gets out, he get just gets out by punching, punching the windshield. The and then he gets out. And you could tell that he was just on so much adrenaline. And, you, and then he's like... Oh my god, what the fuck did you do that? I could have killed him. And he's like, what the fuck do you mean, dude? You almost (laughs) killed us. And they're both mad at each other, but it's like a weird, irrational moment. But it also proves Victor's point of like, yeah, this guy would die for the ideology. You know what I mean? He's totally cop through and through, you know? And then the guy who slammed, the conductor of the train who slammed into Victor is like, what the fuck, man? What the (laughs) fuck did you just do? Like, understandably so upset. (laughs) And Victor fucking kills him. (laughs) And his face is covered in blood. And at this point, he's just like, 
I'm so enraged yeah. with anger. Yeah. And he wants Schwartzy to die so bad. And then they just charge at each other. Schwartzy. Okay. First, like, um, Art is like, all right, you could just go kill him, man. It's fine. Just go kill him. And then Schwartzy goes through mist and just starts shooting <laughs> at Victor and kills him. Kills him dead. That's all the climax you need for this because there yeah. was a bus chicken yeah, scene. That was cool. I, I really dug that. And and it happened in the last one too. Like it happened in a, it's happened in a couple of movies where there was like a climax, anti-climax. Commando has like a climax, anti-climax. Um, it's strange. It's really interesting though. This is delightful. Sorry, Nick. Nick sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm so glad you're happy. Yeah, I am. This is just the, wonderful. The next scene, they have this establishment where they're like, they're respecting each other as police officers. I love this. Yeah. This was so cool. Like, it was like interesting because from like kind of like a working class perspective yeah. of like, hey, we do the same job. We're not politicians. Schwartzy says like, we're not politicians. We're police officers. You know, and, and, it's and okay he, to like each other. It's okay to yeah. like each other. Yeah. And, then he, and then he says in Russia, we have this uh, tradition where we give, uh, like, I guess friends, uh, like, or new friends or whatever, uh, a gift. And he gives him the watch yeah. that he has on. And he's like, oh, that's really nice. And and John, Jim Belushi gives him his watch. He's like, this one's a thousand dollars. I got it so I much. It cheap for, from, from like my brother-in-law or whatever. And then he looks at, at the watch Schwartz he gives him and he's like, this is twenty dollars from East Germany. Yeah. How does he know it's twenty dollars though? Does I don't it say know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Just was, imagine a guy like this, you know, a, a loose cannon cop. He's probably got like some underground gambling things. For going. sure. For sure. <laughs> um, and they talk baseball, which was such a weird and interesting touch. Like Schwartz yeah. is kind of like, yeah, you know, baseball's coming to the, the USSR and maybe we'll play it better than you guys one day. So it's kind of like a like a weirdly like, well, capitalism's going to win, guys. So let's just, you know, join the club. It was kind fun. of like an induction, you know, like a weird, yeah, yeah. like a weird moment to tag on to the end, you know, like. You know, baseball's coming to the USSR. It's almost over, guys. Yeah. We, we all know it. For sure. That's so sure. weird. When I when I was when I heard that part, I was thinking about the episode of Deep Space Nine where they 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 play baseball. Let's go to the Hollow Suite. The Niners. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and they good. play this Vulcan team, and I'm like, Yeah, yeah. Vulcans are basically Soviet Russians in space. Oh. There's a great scene where Art gets personal. He's like, hey, man, were you actually going to shoot me at the bus terminal? Yeah, yeah. And Schwartzy kind of shrugs and he's like, yeah, that's what I figured. But it's like, what does that shrug mean? Like, <laughs> I was kind of like, it. I interpreted it as like, yeah, I was probably going to shoot yeah, you. Yeah, probably, probably. He, wow. he yeah. wanted to get his shit done. Yeah. Uh, and there's a really cool match cut at the end when um, he... Uh, Schwartzy leaves and as he turns around he salutes uh, Jim Belushi yeah. and then it cuts to him saluting in Russia. That was such a cool fucking shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh and my a cool god. way to end the goddamn movie. I too. love that they ended it in Russia and like you can just see like it, it, every shot that Russia is in this movie is magical. Yeah. It looks Super like a cool. different world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And awesome. I was just so blown away by seeing Russia. I was like, Mother Russia. Like, I was just like, yeah. Holy shit. I remember, like, remember going to Russia and, like, seeing it in real life was just as cool. My brother and I went to Russia in 2006. Nice. Yeah. It was so cool. Yeah. It was really cool. Oh, man. We went with our dad. Yeah? Yeah. That's wicked. And our grandma. Yeah, it was a uh, weird little we, trip. We, we were on a cruise <laughs> that was convert a convert an old converted Soviet warship. Yes, and it was so practically made. The and it went on a cruise down the Volga. Yeah, yeah. the the beds Man. were like like ended uh, at like the middle of our shins. Yeah, and it, like it was built for practicality. It was it was amazing. It was and my brother saw a ghost who was me. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was so scary. Okay, so do you and want? We saw a ghost. No, no, I did not see a ghost. This is amazing. This story is amazing. Do you want to hear a thirsty that for was, more? Yeah, uh, yeah. Are you thirsty for more? Well, I could, I could go for a sip. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was the best. So, I was sleeping, and we were on this cruise ship that was like this old, like Soviet warship that was so like it, like the the rooms were like prisons. 
They were just so Soviet. And we slept in these like bunks on either side. And then I got up to pee as I do in the middle of the night. Often for some reason, I have like the like prostate of a, like a, like a 75 year old man, <laughs> but I get up to pee quite often. And I, um, got up to pee and I usually sit down to pee when it's nighttime because I like to just like keep my sleep happening, you know, like, yeah, who wants yeah, to, who wants to sleep. deal with that responsibility? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. You just piss all of the sea. <laughs> and through the crack of the, the cabin door, I could see my brother standing in between the crack of the door, putting his hands out towards me in kind of like an X-Files ghost sort of way. Like a w- wiggly, pasted on ghost yeah. type. And he was saying, it's okay, man. It's okay. <laughs> and I just said, what the hell are you doing, man? Go back to bed. Like, wh- you know, we're, we're sleeping. It's the middle of nighttime. And as I got up and like past the threshold of the door, that image just disappeared from the room and my brother was in bed sleeping and I started screaming because I was just like, ah, ah, Alex, Alex. And then, and and then Alex I said, apparently. Huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> like, Alex started, like started screaming at me. And, and the funny thing is, apparently, uh, my brother tells me this in the morning, I, I started screaming <laughs> and then just immediately went back to bed. Yeah. Like I fell right back asleep. <laughs> yeah, because I said, I said, Alex. Alex, I saw a ghost version of you. <laughs> and he was like, well, it's okay, man. Don't worry about it. Like, he was like, all right, man, just go to bed. I don't care. Well, and like, yeah, he just yeah. fell right back asleep. Well, this is yeah, the yeah. funny thing. Was that later on in the morning when my brother was just dis- like, right before my brother was describing what happened, I saw him cowering. It like stayed up from when he woke up. And I woke up and I was so tired and I didn't realize why I was so tired. And he was, he, my brother was like, Alex, can you just, can you just stay up with me? I saw a ghost, man. And I was like, what? And I was so angry. I was so angry because oh I was God. so tired. And it was like, it was like, but like, like also like looked at him and could, could clearly see that he was terrified. And I was like, what the fuck happened? It was like, it was like a weird mix of like, he felt sorry for me, but he was also so angry with me. I was me. so mad, but I felt so bad because I could tell, like, like, you know, do you have a sibling? No. No? no like, do you, have you ever, do you have like a cousin that you're close to or like a really close friend that no. like, like, no, I, my life is a vast morass. Of oh, that sucks, dude. It's the best having a brother. Connection. It's um, really great having yeah, a brother. Clearly. Yeah, I'm so like, lucky. No, honestly, like when people like, I'll get back to the story in a second. But when people are like, ah, I don't really hang out with my brother. I'm like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, what so do you mean? surprised. What? Because what? What? it's like you're kind you're of like, scared. How, how did you how did you end up hanging out with this person for so long and not like them? Like, that sounds terrible. But like, what ended up happening was like I could tell from his face that he was terrified because I could tell my brother. Yeah. But yeah. like, also I was like, oh, dude, like it's such a dumb fucking reason that I'm staying <laughs> up for this. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we're ex- I'm exhausted. We're on a trip. We're going on like like tours and shit. I don't want to be tired yeah it was it was really unreasonable and i've just realized that i have like night terrors and that's what that was yeah he had he has night terrors so like wait, like he'll he'll <laughs> no, no no he'll he'll like but he'll be awake sometimes and not realize like waking, he's waking dreaming, dreaming yeah, sort yeah, of. Yeah. yeah 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 um and and it's that's scary and we both at certain points have had p- p- sleep paralysis oh my brother and i have both experienced p- sleep paralysis it's so scary <laughs> remember that time and i've apparently done this same thing too remember that time in turkey when i was standing at the window and you were like alex what are you doing? And I was like, I'm peeing. And I was really mad at you. And you were like, no, dude, the bathroom's over here. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I went to the bathroom, didn't pee, and then went back to bed. Whoa, so yeah, I remember that. That was I, amazing. I have that kind that of thing amazing. too. So we both have like weird sleep things. Okay, guys, talking to you guys about this movie was such a delight. And I really enjoyed having you on the podcast, Adam. Thank yeah. you so much. I'm sorry that at the end we talked over you so much. Oh, no, it's fine. But like you look like you really edged into just like enjoying the show. Yeah, so yeah. So I felt like we gave you you gave us permission to do it. I felt like I was at a show. Cool. Both, both I felt like I, I'm getting to see. Ah, fuck. What are the names of the the uh, the Muppets? 
the crazy old men who sit up in the balcony. Oh, uh, they're not half bad. They're all bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. Bravo. I loved that. Oh, it was great. <laughs> I what love that cr- stupid punchline. <laughs> <laughs> they, they ain't half bad. They're all bad. Yeah, no, I feel like I am watching a young... Oh, Statler, Statler and, and Waldorf. Waldorf. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad I'm able to watch a young Statler and Waldorf. Because <laughs> we're both bald. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um... Adam, yeah, we do a segment on the show where we talk about how many Schwartzies we give this. Schwartzies are a metric that measure uh, how Schwarzenegger a movie is. And we do one to ten Schwartzies, uh, one out of ten. So uh, what would you give this movie in Schwartzies out of ten? Uh, well... How long should I sit here and <laughs> pretend that everybody doesn't know I'm going to say 10 out of 10? Oh, wow. 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 Okay. Wow. That's very interesting. Amazing. I feel like because I don't know how big a fan of Schwartz you are. Okay. Like, are you a big fan of Schwartz? Yeah, pretty big. Okay. Like, do you I have, mean, I knew about this movie. Do you have that's a... True. I mean, but see, interestingly enough, this movie is not Pantheon Schwartzy for Alex and I. Really? And like, honestly, I feel like now it could be. It's but definitely for me. Like, it, it's entered into the upper echelons of, of Schwartzy. Because this Rod, was a surprise Schwartzy. Yeah, Raw Deal used to be where where this it was, where I was like, ah, I used to dismiss this because when I was a kid, I thought it was kind of boring. Um, oh, but now Raw Deal is so bad, oh, dude. Raw Deal. Fuck Raw Deal. Oh, we hate Raw Deal fuck so Raw much. Deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Adam, what would you give this movie for a star rating? One out of ten. Out, out of ten? Yeah. I feel like if at some point there had been a, like, bit where they went to, like, the Chicago Zoo and uh, Danko was riding a bear... And uh, Art was riding an eagle, and they like rode those two animals at bad guys. That would make this movie a ten out of ten. That would give it a ten. <laughs> okay, but but as of right now, it has a what? Hard nine. Oh wow, Alex, what about you? Um, I'm gonna give this a like. I'm gonna go hard and give this a 3.5 Schwartzies out of 10. <laughs> it's like hardcore, man. Because it's so so different. It's no. so it's so like like hardcore. Like he doesn't say I'll be back. He doesn't have oh. one-liners. He doesn't like all the one-liners oh. are all within character, right? Oh. They're like meant to be funny. Interesting. Right? But they're like for this character, they're so character specific. And I love it. I think it's great. I, I'm not saying that's not a bad thing for me. Wow, dude. I'm so surprised by your answer. And I think it's amazing. I think that your reasoning. <laughs> yeah, that's like, a great answer. Like, that's a good like, point. I gave this bad Schwartzies because it's so good. Because it's so good. Because, um, okay, so for th- this movie is a 9.5 star rating out of 10 and a 3.5 star rating out of Sch- a Schwartzy rating out of Schwartzy. Did I give 9.5? I didn't say it. My... I'm saying, oh, you I'm say. saying. Oh. You inspired me. <laughs> oh, damn, because, dude. Because, because it's so good and Schwartzy's so good in it, he didn't have to be Schwartz. Yeah, right? that's the thing. Yeah. Like this, like the reason it gets it transcended Schwartz. Yeah, because the reason it gets 3.5, those 3.5 is all acting chops. It's just for me. charm. Yeah, charm. it's all acting chops. It's all charm. Um, I would give this, I would give this movie, like it's really, really solid. Um, I would give this like a 7.5, a, a 7.9. Like I'll, I'll, okay. I'll edge towards it. I'll do a, a light, a light eight. Yeah. A, a light eight <laughs> to a hard seven for sure. Um, shout out to our boy Fantano. Hi everyone. Don't think, think Tano. Um, but I, I, I love this movie so much. I, I love I this movie so, so much too. I was so down. Um, it was a real, real delight. I felt like it had a lot of nuanced cultural criticisms that were really relevant for the time and like still relevant today. And yeah, I thought it was like it stood the test of time and like the kind of buddy comedy aspect of it wasn't really even an issue. It was actually not really a buddy comedy. It was more like a very like nuanced telling of socioeconomics and politics in this like very um, light and funny way. Like, 
in in a in a way that like it's seminal. Yeah, you know, in a way that like twins, like you could you could like look at and be like, oh, this is like this isn't appropriate anymore. Let's put this movie to bed. Uh, this movie had a, a, like the predator thing where it's like, is this movie problematic? It is, but it's commenting on the problems. It's looking at it critically. Is it doing it on purpose? Yes, it is. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. I, I like that element. And a, like a push-pull for me in movies in general is something that I really like, especially, um, you know, movies that I like really, really hate sometimes. Like when in, initially when I'm watching them. I'll, I'll react so badly to them. And then like days later, I'll be like, no, that was an amazing movie. <laughs> I love that movie. Adam, thank Yo. you so much for coming. Yeah, man. Uh, we really, really loved having you here. I really loved your perspective on all of these issues because you work in... Okay, so like I did, I wanted to dovetail this into the podcast. You work in harm reduction, and this yeah. movie was full on about like the sub subtext to this movie is like Reagan era drug scares. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, and definitely. like just like rampant drug use and like not understanding of addiction and mental health issues. Let's do harm, basically. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like let's. They're part of a system that that exists within specifically a Reagan era dynamic, but at the same time, a now dynamic of police are the, the solution to this issue rather than um, let's help people. Let's destigmatize drugs. Let's get them off drugs if they want to be off drugs. Yeah. And, you know, like uh, talking about toxic masculinity yeah, yeah. and like in all of these movies, I feel like, you know, you creating a platform for men to talk to other men about masculinity and like how that has like negatively impact their, impacted their lives is like really amazing. And I like to do that with this podcast as well. I, I want to stamp this by saying our next episode is Twins. Um, you know, it's a terrible movie. Uh, <laughs> we've already recorded the episode. It was a bad movie, but it was a good episode. So, you know. I like some of that movie. Yeah. I well, like the brothers in the movie. I like <laughs> movies the, with the brothers. Oh, I love movies with yeah. brothers. Yeah. I just imagine, I just imagine them going to the tailor. Yeah. That definitely happens in the movie. They go to the tailor and get matching yeah, suits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sweet matching. Okay. <laughs> There's good parts of that movie yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. For sure. Anyway, thanks, Adam. Have a good night. Yeah. Bye. Good night. Bye.